Uh, is it okay if I just do a general chatting with participants before we formally start, just so that we don't, we can use the time, that five minutes time. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Guru, yeah, yeah. No problem. No, no yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, generally, uh, we had, you know, the uh, there was a form that was shared in which expectations of participants was also collected. And uh, I think, as to be expected, many people are hoping that this program will help in the actual creation of e-content for the purpose of online pedagogy and for some understanding of online pedagogy also. Would anybody like to elaborate just, you know, anything further in terms of expectations, uh, then whoever wants to speak can speak. And then whenever uh, Sujata Madam decides we can start, we'll start. Sir, actually, uh, after the end of this program, uh, could be able to, the thing is, we could be able to use all these resources uh, or the video link or whatever that you give, no, sir. We should mm. be able to, uh, will it guide us in creating a, a course on our own? That is my question. Because uh, on the videos, no, sir, even though if we do it, we couldn't be able to have that hands-on experience, uh, like uh, immediate uh, thing we couldn't be able to do. Once we go back to our college, our routine starts, we forget all these things. So how could we able to have touch in this without even creating a course in our free time? How can we can develop all these tech savvy things, all that? Yeah, actually, you know, uh, I've been in this uh, in this line of, you know, teacher teacher education programs for technology and uh, teaching. And one colleague of mine gave this very interesting concept. He said there is a concept called trained unuser. And he explained that trained unuser is the person who undergoes several training programs. But <laughs> but because after the program, you you go back to your familiar, you know, the ocean of uh, struggle and teaching and time shortage. And therefore, in the absence of taking it forward, the learning doesn't sustain. So that's a very important point. I would like to just say that, uh, see, necessity is the mother of invention, they say. So... Even, for example, learning a new language, whenever uh, there is a need for you to learn a new language, you will learn. The, like, for example, I'm a Tamilian. I'm in Bangalore. For a long time, I didn't know Kannada. But when I had to learn Kannada, I learned Kannada. So for you, that need to create a course, the institution must insist that you go and offer your, you know, Abel, Mujay, Mar, there is a saying in Hindi. You go and tell your institution, I've undergone this program. Please tell me to create a course and ask the institution that you are belonging to to make you responsible to create a course, uh, e-content based uh, digital course. And once they make you responsible, then they'll also have to give you time to do it. So that way, your skills will actually be used. But if your institution, if the home institution is not embarking on an immediate program, then the challenge will be there. But the good news is even if you don't immediately work on it, it is like, you know, you learn cycling in childhood. You're not cycled for many years. But tomorrow, if somebody gives you a cycle, still you will cycle. So the skills that you learn in a program, they don't completely die. They go into your subconscious and then uh, they become surfaced again. But best is if you're able to actually take a course and develop a course immediately after you get into it. It will be it will not be 100% course. It will be a 70%, 40%, 50% course only because everything develops only with practice. Nothing, even like singing, you cannot become MS Subalakshmi, you know, in a, a two months time or one year's time also that uh, sadhana is required. Sorry, I, you, from now you know that for short questions, I give long answers. So anybody else has any other question? Hmm. Exactly. I hope so. I was able to give you some ideas, not to feel, not to feel negative or, you know, life challenges will be there, but nevertheless, human beings will overcome the challenges. That is how we are. Hmm. Yes. Happy to meet a Tamil person in this forum. So we're all from Chennai. Wanna come. People wanna come, sir. I am one of those persons who's, you know, completely unfortunately rootless. So I know more Kannada. I think my Kannada is better than my Tamil, at least in terms of the script, which is unfortunate. You know, Thai Mori, as they say. I am I'm, I'm a betrayer to the Thai Mori. So mm -hmm. what to do? But that is one in my list to learn. I want to learn and you know become better and better in Tamil. Oh. Hopefully, in my long life, I will find some time. Sure, sir. Mm. 
sir before going to the course uh, shall we have we'll have a small uh, welcome yes please mm. please please mm. i take immense pleasure in welcoming uh, dr gurumurthy kasinathan director it for change uh, is got experience in national coalition on the education emergency is a member uh, since uh, till 2021 um he is a director for it for change and lead education and technology and he is also a visiting faculty at tata institute of social science and he is also a visiting faculty for the following courses in the ma education program at this mumbai and this hyderabad and uh, he is the consultant in azam premji foundation uh, he is also a head education leadership and management he is a team leader policy planning unit collaboration with the government of karnataka he is a senior consultant in oracle financial services software limited and he is known for his languages hindi kannada tamil and he at the uh, marathi also he knows and he has got top skills like research teaching and program management so very happy to have you here sir such an intellectual personality we are having today Uh, we hope that uh, we will all enjoy an interactive session uh, of this time sir afternoon time so if you have interactive session it will be more useful to us <laughs> thank you sir on behalf of everyone i invite uh, sir to the session yeah thank you thank you so much and uh, two things one is whenever you hear your introduction then you pinch yourself and ask is this me or is it somebody else because you know all these things could not be <laughs> true for me and secondly you know uh, you rightly said that there's a post lunch session and uh, i will start with a joke so one of my boss in my previous organization it, you should tell even if you want to sleep please sleep but don't snore because you will wake up the other people so that is what you used to say so i hope the participants on this will not have to sleep or to snore we'll keep it interactive so uh, the best way for it to be interactive is feel free to you know uh, speak when you want to and i think there is a raise hand feature also that google meet has so whenever anybody wants to say anything feel free to share and certainly i don't want to keep talking uh, continuously it will be boring for everybody so uh, uh, thank you so much uh, for to the university for inviting us to be a part of this program and personally uh, i feel that social sciences is uh, is certainly the most important area of learning and knowledge and unfortunately in the indian education system social sciences is not given its due place of importance we have some obsession with you know math science not that they are not important but somehow social sciences is, uh, which is actually the most important according to me uh, deserves to get much more importance and one of the challenges that we have in social science education is how do we make sure that our courses and our programs and our faculty are really uh, on on par with the best in the world and this is a continuous challenge so it is not that suddenly one day we become extraordinary people or our courses become extraordinary but i would say between programs in india and maybe programs in some of the developed countries there is a difference as far as the social science education is concerned i i i know i'm saying some things that maybe some of you may not like to hear but maybe you will agree with me that social science education in india has to do a lot to improve and i count myself as a part of that i am not as an outsider speaking about it my work is in education and education is firmly within the social science space i would like to believe uh, <clears throat> so uh, so that is the basis for us to say that uh, we uh, this course is therefore very important for us and i am hopeful that you know the 30 33 participants who are in this course we'll work together and what uh, dr sujatha mentioned in the beginning the apprehension that while we attend this course how will we be able to take this back into our regular work that is a very very important question because at the end of the day we are giving valuable time 10 days of your time you are giving for this particular program you would certainly want it to be useful subsequently so i am going to just uh, talk about the session plan that my organization it for change has uh, you know uh, sort of designed it's available on the slide i think all of you can see the slide on the left side i'll explain this slide i'll invite comments and uh, feedback from all of you because our design what we want to offer is not fixed or rigid 
it will be it can be dynamic based on the needs of the participants we will be able to change the uh, whatever we are planning to offer over this uh, next few days so that it is really useful for you so with that i'll go ahead but before that does anybody have any question does anybody want to say something i'm going to talk about the session plan that it for change uh, as an organization we, are, we have some seven eight sessions that we are going to take over the next uh, few days the plan for that i will talk about and then we will get into the moodle which is the session for today but before that anybody has any uh, question burning question okay so then let me go ahead uh, so basically there are two components as we can see if you see the course title it talks about e content and it talks about online pedagogy so those are the two key components of this course and they are of course related because online pedagogy ob ob obviously requires e content you cannot do an online session online class purely with uh, you know physical uh, print material alone you need digital materials for online education so they are connected those are the two components of this course and if you look at the slide that's in front of you we have tried to address both these aspects so in terms of sessions uh, one thing for this particular course is content development is very very critical and i think even the session that happened in the morning i think there was some discussions on creation of text resources creation of video resources so e content has to be created because before e without e content you cannot uh, you know offer online uh, classes so as far as e content development is concerned what we need to learn is traditionally we had a textbook and even today uh, school education of course completely depends on textbooks but even in college education i think even when i was in college there were prescribed textbooks but of course we learned that you should not depend only on textbook and each of the areas that we talk about in the social sciences are so vast that you should go beyond textbooks so apart from textbook you, creating text material is an important part of e content because there will be some articles that uh, will be available already that you want to provide as a resource for reading there may be articles and uh, materials that you want to write yourself which will also be you know connecting the different pieces of the content you will have to write out the course content so text material development is very very important and i'm sure everybody who's logged into this program has used microsoft word so the microsoft word as a, a software for creating text material is very powerful it can do almost anything that we want to do including it can function as a desktop publishing tool so therefore all of you are already familiar with text material creation but what some of you may not be familiar with this in addition to text material if you just add text it would be not so appealing it may not be so impactful so along with text material we need to also have images so the images there is a saying called a picture that can speak like a thousand words so how do we make simple images of course now everybody has got a powerful camera in their hand because every mobile phone the camera in the mobile phone is more powerful than the you know mobile for the cameras that we used to have before so with the mobile phone we can take photos but how do you edit images how do you do some simple editing to images so that it becomes a part of your resource or there is an image available online you can also go online and download images but you want to edit some part of it you want to crop it you want to change its uh, hue you want to change its uh, resolution whatever you want to do you should be able to do some simple image editing so image resources when we add it to text that becomes that material becomes that much more useful and powerful in addition to text materials when you are printing in the traditional mode content is always print and therefore print can contain text and image but in the modern digital world apart from text you can also have audio and video so i think there is already a session i saw in the session plan there is one session on audio resource making so text resource you already know image editing we will cover a little bit audio material creation is already there as a session in the course we will also add video editing i know that video making was also covered today so we will complement that session and we will help you to create videos of your own as well as edit existing videos so always along with creating a new material we should also be able to edit existing material and then how do you put it together and how do you publish it so that is a left part if you see e content development these are the different kinds of content that we will encourage you to create as a part of this course now most important thing and i want a discussion on it is 
in the feedback in the participant information form that was circulated and all of you have filled it there was one question identify a topic that you want to create e content on and the most important starting point is you need to identify a very important relevant uh, topic uh, and the topic should be such that in the short period that you're having in this course you are able to create some useful course content for that assuming you have to offer it as a course so for example i saw when i looked at the uh, uh, topics that somebody had put a topic called history no history is too vast an area you cannot be creating a, a course called history because that is everything that's a subject right it's a discipline it's not a topic so that topic like history has to be changed and somebody had put in a very very specific uh, topic like uh, you know uh, uh, our in the in our um, dharma kshetra which is a trait manjunatha dharmasthala manjunatha so somebody had talked about an organization working in that area as their topic so you may not you could of course pick up that organization and make a content only on that topic but are you likely to offer a course on a particular organization i am doubtful so my suggestion to all of you and i want us to discuss it a little bit now before we go ahead i want you to on the on the chat window uh, can we open the chat all of us can open the chat and i would like you to write down what you might have given a topic and you may be convinced that that topic is good enough it is narrow it is brief it allows you to create content text content image content audio content video content we'll create all that content we'll assemble it into a course that is what we want to do it over the next few days so that topic i want you to type in the chat window so i want all of you who are participating in this conversation today to uh, and you can discuss it if you are having a question or a doubt we can discuss it again so over to all of you for example i don't know who said history maybe you can just look at the topics uh, in the form that they have given somebody had given history as i am talking to my colleague rakesh is also there in this call but can people type in their uh, topics all of you i am waiting for you to type in the uh, chat you can even share if possible the i know that is a different i want the topic list which is there in that i want it projection project idea yeah. can everybody please type in their topic names you just uh, project it share share screen project that what are people's topics dr rayer what is your topic dr abdul haji what is your topic i am taking their names because i can see their names on the chat but otherwise all others as well huh no uh, just a topic uh, dr yes, like human ahead. resource management sir human resource, human resource, human resource ma management and huh. uh, yeah. that is too big a topic so within human resource management you have to identify one topic on which go for, for example uh, training, huh? uh, tra training and development training and development also is too broad see assume that you are joining you, you, you assume okay. that students want to join a course that you are going to offer uh, yeah. i would suggest that training and development can be a course but it isn't it okay. in the course if you pick up a let's say a, a topic you know because yeah. see in 4 or 5 days we are not going to be able to develop an entire course also yeah. so training and development is too large within training and development can you pick up a topic yes sir yes sir like you know uh, training needs of uh, tech sector employees or uh, motivational aspects in training and development or you know coaching as a component of training something like that if you pick up a more specific topic you can also find the material on a specific topic and try to put it together as a as a resource as a okay, we okay. can think that we are going to develop a module for a course it may be too much to expect that in the short time period of 10 days an entire course can be developed but maybe one module of a course we can develop does that make sense yeah. uh, dr raji yeah yeah correct right sir right Okay. so can you identify a topic for yourself i would like this to be done for everybody because unless the topic is clear you will not be able to uh, for example advanced accounting somebody has given a topic advanced accounting advanced accounting is too broad a topic who has given the topic advanced accounting it is too broad you cannot make a uh, it is too ambiguous also in advanced accounting do you want to say you want to teach let's say uh, funds flow statements or you want to teach uh, a topic like you know ratios you know 
uh, ratios and uh, you want to talk about ratios itself you can create a course unit on ratios uh, who i don't know who's taken advanced accounting as a topic can you speak up huh El Vinkat Narayana sir, are you there? Yeah, can we quickly respond? Yeah, yeah, so that we can... yeah. Ah, so advanced accounting is too broad a topic, sir. You have to no, pick no, up I a didn't, more didn't narrow topic. Advanced accounting, sir. Ah, ah. What is yeah. your topic, sir? Yeah, warehousing types. Warehousing types, types of warehouses. Yeah. Okay, this is what business studies. What area does it come in? Yeah, it comes under logistics and supply management. Okay, okay. So types of warehouses, you will, I hope you will be able to find out. You go online. See, one important part of course development is everything is not written by the course designer. Obviously, 20% of the material will be new, but 80% existing material available online, you have to take it and you have to customize it for the requirements of your course. So I hope types of warehouses, you will be able to find enough material online. Uh, Narayan, sir, what do you feel? Yeah, yes, yeah, sir, right. Okay. It should be, see, so now you understand, topic should not be too broad or too narrow. If it is too narrow also, we won't get material. If it is too broad also, we will not know what to write in that. Yeah. Who else will, uh, whose topic is uh, human resource management? Somebody has taken the topic human resource management. That is too broad again. Haji, sir. Abdul Haji, sir. Ah, okay. That is already discussed. Yeah. Yeah. So we changed yeah, yours. Yeah. yeah. Somebody took the tech topic education. So education is again... Too broad a topic. Can the person who takes took topic called education? Yes. Sharmila, sir. madam. Dr. Yeah, yes, Sharmila, sir. yes. yes sir. Can you change your topic? Can you think of some topic? Yes, sir. You yes, think sir. that you are the faculty in your institution. Okay. Your institution has told you develop a course for me right away. So that course you're developing as a part of this uh, act, this particular uh, program. Okay. So within education, what is of interest to you, Dr. Sharmila? Yeah, sir. Education, introduction to education technology, shall I take it, sir? Okay, you can take time. that. Oh. Yeah, you can take introduction to education technology, yeah. but you must think within that introduction to education technology, what scope you are going to define. So every course, the scope of that course becomes very important, right? So okay, based on the scope, you will be identifying. You can say these are the different modules of the course, and yeah. for each module, you may want to highlight. You may not develop all the modules. You may develop one or two modules as a part of the work in this program itself. Okay, okay. Which institution you are from, Dr. Sharmila? Sir, Tamil Nadu Teachers Education University, Chennai. Sir. Chennai. It's a new university, madam? Yeah, 8 years old university. Sorry, 15 eight years old years. Uh, In the university uh, age terms, it is still young. Yeah, 15 years old university. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Good to, good to, uh, Teachers University is a new idea. Yeah. So I'm glad uh, we are having you with us. Three yes, faculties anybody are else? here, sir. Three yeah. faculties from our university. Okay, thank you. Uh, you said there are three people from your uh, university yeah, yes, here? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So you can also think of collaborating and making one, uh, if, instead of each of you doing separately, because okay. you are from one institution, you might pick up one course idea and three of you develop three modules for that course. So that by the time this program ends, you will go back to your teacher's university and you will tell three modules we have done some basic work. They'll be happy. Instead of three different uh, areas totally, you identify one area. Introduction to education technology is a good area or okay, whatever is of interest and whatever your institution might need. If you keep that in mind also, okay. uh, we will learn. See, our current knowledge need not be a limitation because the internet is available to us. We don't need to be afraid that we don't know too much about an area, so we cannot take up that area. Let us take up an area where our knowledge may be half because we can use the internet for improving our knowledge. That itself is a benefit of the online pedagogy, right? That is the way we will learn. Yeah. Indian slavery, who has taken up, take, uh, taken Indian slavery as a topic? Anybody who is here on Indian slavery? We can quickly go through it. I don't want to take too much time. I just want to say that Indian slavery, I couldn't understand what exactly, which period of time that you're talking about, because I'm not so sure whether in the Indian historical context, I'm assuming it's a topic for history. Huh? Guna Shekharan, sir. Is Dr. Gunashekaran here? Indian slavery uh, as a topic? No, I didn't give though. Indian slavery, I have given something else. Okay, you're, you're, no, no, you're, he's saying he's no. What have you given, sir? I have given two topics, sir. One is critical pedagogy and another is um, oral tradition and social remembering. Oral tradition and social? 
remembering 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 okay very interesting which which you know which college you are teaching sir where are you from i am from tamil nadu but i teach history in uh, jagalnir university jain yeah okay sir fun. okay okay thank you thank you sir so very interesting topics you pick up any one you have given two three but maybe you can pick up one topic whichever you feel will be of value in developing a, a course of course we will try to develop a course it's not going to be 100% ready but the more effort we put in maybe it will be 60% 70% ready so what topic would you like to finalize on doctor uh, um, i can go for oral tradition and social remember yeah only thing when you search on the net you may you may you may find some of course there will be some existing literature that you are already familiar with but we will also try to find digital resources online so i'm sure when you maybe search in specific sites you might find some material yeah okay, so but as you find see when you're looking for material if you find it very difficult you can always broaden the topic a little bit if you find it too broad you can narrow it so slightly we can keep it dynamic uh, keeping the objective in mind end objective in mind anybody else wants to talk about their topic microeconomics somebody has said that is again too broad a topic microeconomics is too broad it should not yes, be sir. a topic uh, it's me dr suman chakraborty yeah. uh, yes sir economics but specially uh, again i mean sir it is only on demand theory i would like to explain i like to elaborate only the idea of demand okay. theory that changes the okay. pattern uh, related ideas okay so demand theory so yeah. you can look at demand theory and uh, okay fine so i think anybody else wants to talk about it we can uh, talk about it otherwise i'll go back to my uh, slide on what we are going to do anybody else wants to talk about any other topic that they have picked up sir, so you right. can change your topic uh, if you are not very sure yes sir, go ahead i am dr malti i want yes. to talk about uh, ict in agriculture sir okay uh, ict in agriculture so i have given a broad topic as agricultural economics but i want to concentrate uh. more on ict so yeah, technology that is, wise uh, how yeah. the agriculture sector can be improved and all it's a very rich area it's yes. a very rich area because lot of work is happening now in terms of digitization of agriculture creation of databases so and also challenges to farmers so you yes, know things sir, like farmers, that one can look uh, at yeah also. yes sir yes sir. corporations are doing something government is doing something in india agricultural databases are being set up so it's a very very important area where are you from madam what do you i'm teach? from university of madras sir Chennai. What's your area of uh, work, madam? Development economics, environment economics, agricultural economics. Okay, economics. wonderful, one, yes. wonderful, wonderful. I think uh, uh, on ICT also in terms of marketing also ICT affects all aspects of agriculture. So yes. right from inputs as well as the marketing side, the credit side. Uh, I think you can look at all that. Even for example, collectivizing farmers also recently. you know maybe a couple of years back or pre covid there was a farmers march to delhi also no so Sir, yes, how definitely. technology how digital technology is used by farmers for collectivizing themselves also can be an aspect yes, you can look at so that is the thing i wanted to do so mm, i see so you, you can look at it quite broadly i think it's a very interesting area so what i want to say is for example she has picked up an area which is seems very interesting and something that you want to develop a material it may not be an area where you are already an expert one request i want to make to all the faculty members here is let us get out of our comfort zones if you pick up a topic that already you have been teaching for a very long time then very easily you will make the material for it or very easily you will find the material for it but my suggestion to you is some new area that you have wanted to explore for yourself some new language you want to learn i'm using it in a metaphorical sense if you pick that up then it becomes a challenge for you to identify material to contextualize material and make it available for your course so i'm inviting all of you to challenge yourselves by picking up an appropriate topic uh, so i think we need to collect the topic names again so maybe we will share a you know a very simple uh, form in the group or in moodle ha uh, there is a, my colleague rakesh when he takes you through moodle there is already a place where topics can be uh, there is an assignment but the i want only the topics uh, topic name to be given and we can take it forward so one thing i didn't mention is concept mapping how many people have done concept mapping digital concept mapping before can you either speak or type in the chat let's use the chat chat window also nobody is chatting you, we can be chatty in the afternoon so anybody has done concept mapping digital concept mapping or even non digital concept mapping anybody has done it Yes.
if you if you are not done it also you can say type no in the chat window not a problem concept mapping as a uh, as a resource i'm not getting the participant list how do i get that ha huh, yeah correct correct yeah yeah i got got dr nisha have you used concept mapping as a tool no sir you are from which institution madam i am from uh, henry baker college kerala kottayam kottayam okay what is the name of the institution henry baker okay what do you teach madam dr nisha what do you teach uh, history sir history okay and what is your topic you have selected for the resource making um, states in ancient india states in ancient india very very interesting topic uh, i think there is a lot of scope for exploring various aspects when you take something at that like that as a topic the social aspects the political aspects the economic aspects yes, i think all those are possible to explore yeah sir. thank you yes, yeah so yeah thank you madam so one important okay. thing we want to learn we want to help you learn is a tool called digital concept mapping and i believe very strongly that the starting point of material making the first step of material making is to make a concept map and when you make a concept map all the ideas that you want to bring into that particular topic you will bring into the concept map and using the concept map you can sequence your material development so there is going to be a very very useful skill that all of you are going to learn and that is mentioned if you see on the content on the left side we have mentioned make a visual plan for your module chosen topic so the concept map is like a visual map and let's say states in ancient india or oral history you know uh, there was one topic that was mentioned what were topic you have picked what did you picked up we will help you to create a concept map for that now for the concept map uh, my colleague rakesh had sent a link on the uh, whatsapp group yesterday all of you need to install those software because without installing the software you cannot learn to use the software you cannot create the resource so there is a software called free plane uh, can you type on the chat window if you had any problems installing it or anything like that have you installed free plane uh, we will be taking a session on it i think next week only not this week but free plane is the tool that we will be using for learning to create digital concept maps how many people have installed free plane already on their computers again you can type on the chat yes uh, whoever is raising their hands if you have finished it you can just say yes in the chat but if you have a question you can ask the question dr lokesh kumar you have any question No, no, that was not a question, sir. I have installed it. Yes, great, okay. great. You can for yes and no, we can simply use okay, the chat. Okay, thanks, yeah. thanks, yeah. great. Yeah. So only if you have a question, you can raise your hand, and then we can talk. So that digital tool is very, very useful, and I will like to say that uh, you are all joined the course for learning e-content development. Normally, concept mapping as a tool we will not learn, and I would like to strongly urge each and every uh, person here that. if you learn how to make concept maps it will change your life in terms of not only material making but also thinking about a topic so concept mapping is a thinking software i call it a thinking software my colleague marzia will be taking a session on concept mapping uh, i think on 21st yeah the uh, already this uh, the agenda is provided in front of you so that will be a very very important lesson for all of you so i will not take too much more time so in terms of the session plan how we have planned it is yeah if you can go back to the previous session so there are two parts as i said we are going to talk one is the content creation previous slide no it's still showing the second slide ha huh, correct now it's come now it's come so if you see the left hand side all the content items are given which is make a visual plan which is a concept map second very important we will also talk about how to source web resources so everything we will not be developing from scratch we will be 80% of the material for your course has to come from what is already available online because we are not reinventing the wheel we are not the first people to think about a topic or an idea we will take like even it's warehousing or it may be uh, oral history or whatever topic we have picked up we will go to the net we will search for resources and we will use those resources in our work so that is a sourcing web resources then uh, uh, we will use use digital tools to revise those resources remix those resources 
take image, text, etc., and create content together. We'll also teach you how to edit video resources in very simple ways. You already have learned, I think, in the previous session about making video material, but maybe next step we will talk about editing videos so that simple videos you can make. Again, video editing is a very uh, Video editing is a very complex area, high skilled area. So therefore, uh, it is not that in one session you are going to become an expert in video making. But if you initiate the process and you keep trying to make videos, at some point in time, either you can make videos or you will become comfortable in explaining to somebody and taking their help to make videos. So that is something. And finally, assembling and publishing this content. Now, what we are going to do in this particular course is the content that you are going to create will be a formal submission in this course. and we will be grading you on the assignment itself. So the most important deliverable for this particular course is actual e-content that you are going to create on the topic that you have chosen. You will present, you will make a presentation on this particular topic with the digital materials that you have created on the last two days. So if you see the session agenda timetable for the program, last two days it is a seminar presentation. In this seminar presentation, each of you will be presenting uh, Dr. Nisha, for example, will be presenting about ancient Indian state. In that ancient Indian state presentation, it will be the presentation of the e-content that she has developed as a part of this program. And she will talk about the, you know, the course uh, objectives, the course uh, content, the methodology of the course, resources for the course, which may be some video resource, which will be the concept map, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that is what we will do. And finally, you will be also submitting this assignment for grading. This whole thing is the e-content part. The second part is the online pedagogy for which we are going to use a software called Moodle. So uh, Moodle is a very powerful software, which will, which is like a learning platform. This Google Meet is also a learning platform, but Google Meet's objective is very limited. In Google Meet, we can meet one another, we can talk to one another, we can see each other's faces. That is what we can do. But Moodle is more than that. In Moodle, we can share content, so each of the faculty who is having presentation files, we can share those presentations on Moodle. We can have some discussions on Moodle. So let's say we want to discuss one particular topic. We want to give feedback to one another on their topic. We can use Moodle for discussions. Faculty's quizzes can be a way of assessing your understanding. So faculty will configure quizzes on Moodle for you. And you will also submit assignment at the end. So today uh, session, uh, my colleague Rakesh and uh, another team member will take you through Moodle and you will learn how to use Moodle for uh, configuring your course. So one is you create e-content for the course. That is one part of it. Second part of it is this content should be made available to the participants using a learning management system, LMS in short, which is what we are going to use Moodle in this particular course. So if you just go to that second slide, so our sessions from it for change team, we are going to cover both aspects. So today and tomorrow, we will be covering Moodle LMS. We will make you try to make you comfortable in using Moodle LMS. We are also planning that you should create your own course on Moodle. So there is a, a platform available where anybody can create a course on Moodle. So my colleagues who will be explaining Moodle to you will take you through that particular uh, course platform and you will create your own Moodle course. So for example, for the topic you have selected, you can create a, a Moodle course. So don't create generic Moodle course of no use. You have to create for your particular topic itself. Yeah, can you just, it's not coming on. No. The slides. For you, it's coming. OK, maybe my view is. Uh... OK, so I'll just show the slide. Any questions from yeah, Now the slide is coming. Yeah, so the sessions are planned like that. Today and tomorrow is on Moodle learning management system, how to configure a course, how to create uh, share content, reading materials on a course, how to structure activities on a course, and how to configure assessments on a course. We will learn that. You will also create your own course on Moodle. On Monday, I will take a session on, I talk about accessing resources from the web. But we cannot download anything and use because that will be copyright violation. So on Monday, my session will talk about FOSS and OER. FOSS stands for free and open source software. OER stands for open education resource. We'll talk about that. On Tuesday, my colleague will talk about concept mapping. I already mentioned to you. And on Friday, we will talk about how to make video resources. So this is the overall plan that we have got for you over the next few days. I request if there are any questions, any comments, 
before i hand it over to my colleague rakesh anybody has any question anybody has any comment anybody has any suggestion does this cover and then last two days you will make the content for your course last two days is seminar presentation each of you will present your particular course content and towards the end of the course you will submit your e content on moodle itself which we will show it to you today yeah any questions any uh, suggestions any comments before i hand it over to my colleague rakesh so my colleague rakesh has been in technology and technology related training for the last more than a decade and he has conducted several sessions including on moodle lms and i'm sure with him you can ask all your questions and doubts it will be an interactive session it will also be a hands on session in some sense so you will once he explains moodle to you you will be creating moodle uh, course on your own over today and tomorrow yeah any questions anybody has any yes uh, dr sujatha please go ahead sir i couldn't download that uh, uh, thing you have uh, told me hmm free plane free plane uh, sir yeah that link yesterday uh, uh, my colleague rakesh has shared on the whatsapp group two links oh, okay. so if you go to that uh, whatsapp group you can maybe uh, you can share it again yeah at the end of the session and in your moodle also you can give the link so yesterday he has shared two links one is for the software called uh, free plane and one is for the software called voco screen but he will show you again he will maybe put it on moodle itself so that you can get the link from moodle that will be easier put the link on moodle on the initial page itself so all of you must install uh, uh, free plane for the concept mapping all of you must install voco screen for the video making without exception if you don't install it you won't be able to learn yes anybody else wants to ask any question yes sir, go ahead chakraborty i have yes, tried sir. to install that uh, free plane but hmm. whenever i go for that uh, username and password Hmm. Uh, most of all times i am getting incorrect username or password entered please try again but i have got from this list uh, from pdb list i have got in our group uh, i am using the same things user username as well as password but uh, it's not possible to download sir all there are two i think that we are talking about two different things username and password will be coming in moodle login when you are trying to log into moodle moodle at oh. that time you may be having a problem user id password for free plane there is no user id password required free plane is like a normal software you might have installed many software applications on your computer before or you install apps on your phone right every other day we are installing app on our phone similarly computer also sometimes you install the software these software what we are talking about are computer software they are not mobile phone software free oh. plane voco screen or install on your computer in that user id password problem is not there it doesn't require user id and password you are talking about moodle and uh, i'll request my colleague to show how to log into moodle with your login id and password that login id and password is already shared on the group he can uh, yeah. share you know it's already shared on the group yesterday yeah okay thank so you moodle you will log in today for purpose of lms voco screen and free plan or software applications for e content creation i hope this distinction is very clear to everybody yeah uh yes Ramesh, sir, any questions from you? Ah, uh, no, sir. I already installed the two tools. Okay. Both the software you installed, sir? Ah, uh, installed. Okay, great, great. Ah, uh, anybody else? Jamuna Devi, Doctor Jamuna Devi. Yes, sir. Your ah, uh, have you been able to install Voco Screen and Free Plan, madam? No, sir. I will do it. Can you please do it today. All of you, you have to install it today itself because. if you face any problem we can help you so it is sometimes it is possible that we are not experts in technology when you try to install a new application you may face some problem if you face the problem let us use the whatsapp group itself please go to the whatsapp group if you face a problem you can share a screenshot and you can say this is my problem or my doubt please help we will certainly help so that everybody is installing the software we will not leave anybody behind so everybody we can work together on that so uh, can you please send yes, the yes. link sir in the whatsapp group yes we will send the link in the whatsapp group but more importantly we will also put it on moodle whatsapp ah. group problem is every now and then whatsapp more messages will come and the old messages will disappear but we will also put these links on moodle itself moodle once you log in that will not keep changing so we will access it in moodle and my colleague rakesh will uh, show it to you dr ratna patel have you been able to install 
डॉक्टर रत्ना पाटिल आर यू देर सर दिस इज गोविंद गो एड सर वोको स्क्रीन आई हेड इंस्टॉल आई कुड नॉट इंस्टॉल दैट बीटा वर्जन बिकॉज दैट इज वन विच इज कमिंग इन द टॉप मोस्ट लाइन right uh, hmm. i think uh, uh, some issues are there it is showing uh, it stable. is not safe to install so install stable <laughs> is it always right. yeah always okay. install have, stable version okay so i have not installed beta i have installed the lower version that is there right better better always install the stable version beta okay. we don't need to be uh, in the front of the technology race so beta version yeah. is for you know expert adventurous people for us uh, stable older versions is always better Uh, no, Def- Windows Defender was showing it is not safe to install, so that's <laughs> so removed. Uh, yeah, no, no. Windows, don't trust Windows. You trust us. Don't trust Windows. <laughs> sure, sir. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that I will talk about next week is free and open source software. So in IT for Change, for example, we don't use Windows operating system. We don't use Microsoft Office. We don't use Chrome browser. We don't use Google Search. These are all software created by companies, which is called proprietary software. You know. they own the software they only give us the permission to use the software windows is not yours you might have paid money for windows it may be sitting in your computer but microsoft says windows belongs to us it doesn't belong to you so we use linux operating system we use libreoffice so that is called fos and we can install fos in any computer any time voco screen is fos free plane is fos so therefore anybody can install it without any problem if windows says don't trust it don't trust windows sure Dr. Bupati, have you been able to install? Sir, actually we are trying to install, sir, but the, the link what you are sharing the work screen and all having many links, sir. Click here to download and click here to download. There are many options like that. Which we will one? make it simple. We'll make it simple for you, sir. Yes, sir. On Moodle, we'll share a simple link. We can. We'll help you. No problem. Which institution are teaching, Dr. Bupati? Sir, myself from Tamil Nadu Teachers Education University. Sir. Oh, very good, very good. So, if you are coming, if more than one person is coming from the same institution and your work area is uh, common, then you can think of a common topic also. It is up to you. It I leave it to you. You can two, three of you also can pick up one topic. Then you can go in depth into the topic. Whereas otherwise, it is more difficult. But you are also welcome to each of you submit your own e content also. uh that way we can uh, do that yeah basically okay. lot of it and la- i'll just end by saying one very important thing that uh, in any course like this 80% of the en- of the benefit will come from the efforts put in by the participants i would say 20% is from the faculty's efforts because we will do our best but how much the participants will benefit from the course is dependent on how much energy and effort the participants will put in so whenever we give some assignment or whenever we ask you to do something if you do it 100% you will learn a lot you can do it 50% also nothing can be done about it you can do 200% also that is also possible my request to all of you is please do 200% of whatever you are picking up in this course we will help you whenever you want any help from us that guarantee i can give that any time you have any difficulty we will be there to help you completely so that at the end of the program you should feel that yes i was able to create e content i understood what is online pedagogy and therefore i am ready to take the next step for my institution you know that is what really we want to look at uh i will just yes, close sir. now uh yes tell me yes sir sir i am opening yeah. that uh, lms link moodle learning management system yeah yeah uh, it is giving asking username and password uh, or login as yeah. a guest Yes, yes. It will. Everybody, each of you have got a login ID and password, and that login ID and password list is shared in a PDF file in the WhatsApp group. I think again we can share it uh, now in the WhatsApp group. Each of you has a unique ID, so I, user IDs are not shared. Each of you, each participant for this course has a unique login ID for Moodle. Password, I think, is a simple password. You can just log in. You can change your password also if you want. So uh, that will be. I'll request my colleague Rakesh to share it in the group again. the login id for each person the pdf is available you have to give that login id and you have to give the password indicated then you will be able to log in and see your course which is this particular program we have configured this program itself as the uh, course yes anybody else wants to say anything anybody has any anything else to say
Dr. Shabna, we'll end with Dr. Shabna. Dr. Shabna, are you there? Have you been able to install the applications? So maybe I've been able to successfully put some participants to sleep, I think. So maybe they are not um, they are not yet awake, so they're not able to respond. Anybody else has any questions, any comments? Otherwise, we'll go ahead and close. But it's thankfully, right. nobody was nobody was snoring, so therefore nobody has been woken up. So that is a good thing. <laughs> yes, Dr. Shama, you want to say something? Shamala? Dr. Shamala, you're on mute. Yes, sir, sir, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Hmm. No, I have already installed this. Sir. Installed, sir. No problem. Wonderful. Sir. What? Mm, what is your topic, Dr. Shamla? No, I have uh, chosen. A... Can't hear you. You have chosen which topic? Sir, I have chosen uh, global warming. Wonderful, wonderful topic. Uh -huh. Again, it is very broad. That is also useful because uh, uh, sir, you can sir, uh, interact with. Uh, can I change? Can uh, I change some other topics, sir? About uh, no. GST. Actually, it's up to you. You can see About global GST. warming is broad enough, but you might want to do an introduction to global warming. No, so if you can, depends on what is the course you have in mind. So, introduction to global to warming is. Mm, mm. Sir, you if can. I want to change in the middle, I can change the topic, sir. For Don't example, change in the middle. Oh, oh no, ah. I, if I want to change it now itself. Now GST. you can. Now you change. About, uh, about GST, sir. GST is boring, madam. It's the most boring. <laughs> Global warming is so much more current, interesting. No? Current scenario is going on uh, on that only, sir. People Tamil Nadu suffering. versus central government. Yeah, suffering <laughs> and uh, because of GST. Okay, that is also, yeah. Actually, the knowledge of GST is not very much high. So if you want yeah. to create a course on GST, understand what is a, uh, you know, why do we need a GST? What is the advantage of a GST? What is the disadvantage of GST? Fiscal power, you know, if you're talking about federalism and those kind of ideas, it will be useful. Federal structure and, you know, fiscal uh, yeah. power of the state government, fiscal power of the union government. Yeah. But global Even warming in, is also in, important. In Tamil Nadu, they have to, uh, non in non movement scheme, they have chosen the topic uh, related on capital market and uh, GST and income tax. Sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, Fine, madam. Which college you are? Mm, which I am college from Madurai, sir. I am from Madurai. MSS Very wonderful. College. Wonderful. Wonderful, madam. Okay, if there are no more questions, then I will hand over to my uh, colleague and he will take us through it. But the slide, is it clear? So we are looking at e-content sessions. We are looking at online pedagogy LMS sessions. And together, we hope that e-content and online pedagogy, we will give you some ideas. Bottom, if you see the yellow color slide, there are two other sessions. One is on FOS OER, which I will take on Monday. And another session, final session, what we call as TPCK, Technology Pedagogy Content Knowledge. That will be the last session that we will take. You can see the slide now which is all the sessions if anybody has any question on these you can ask now otherwise i'll hand over to rakesh sir yeah so thank you very much for your uh, time and uh, i hope uh, i did not put all of you to sleep i know some of you have been kind enough to keep your video on and therefore i can make i know that at least three or four people have been with me in this session and i hope more of you will be able to be with us and thank you so much. I'll be in the uh, in the session, but my colleague Rakesh will now take over. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, during the session, if people have to log into Moodle, then maybe uh, Harish can just share that PDF also of login <laughs> already. OK, great. It's already shared in the group. Uh, we can share again if required. Yeah. I, I'll be in the call, but I will uh, put my uh, audio also mute. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you, I hope I am now audible to all of you. Very good afternoon, sir. Yeah, yeah. Good. good afternoon. Yes. 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 Thank yes. you, sir. So, yeah, myself, Rakesh. So, I'm a colleague of uh, Guru. So, yeah, so let's start the uh, 
exploring in Moodle app. So before uh, going to explore Citabase, so just uh, let's try to understand why we are using a Moodle. And also the full form of the Moodle is modular object oriented dynamic learning environment. So this is a full form of the Moodle actually. Uh, so simply the short form is Moodle. Uh, but uh, the big question is why Moodle? Why, uh, what is that Moodle? So Moodle as uh, already Gurusar said, so it's a free and open source learning management system. So it, this is a fast LMS systems where uh, teacher educators or teachers can create a courses on their subject for the learners. So, uh, so as I said, this is a free and open source software. And uh, the good thing about this free and open source, it's not only the terms of free, free of cost. It also have a, uh, you will have a full control of the, the software. Like for example, you can personalize, you can customize the software however you want to uh, give it to the learners. So apart from the content, the content anyway, the educators will, uh, all of you will customize the content. But apart from that, so along with that, you can you can customize your the learning platform also. So that is a good thing about it. For example, if you look at our own the Moodle, which we will show you now, uh, that is a customized Moodle. We have customized uh, as per our requirement. So like that, the institution or universities can customize the this Moodle software. And uh, yeah, Moodle is since it is a free and open source software. So any universities or any they can download the software and host it on their web server. So web server means if any institutions are maintaining a website or a uh, uh, email server, so they can host this uh, the Moodle software along with that. So that's a good thing about the Moodle. So if you, if it comes to the other the proprietary uh, LMS softwares, which you want to pay some uh, money to get the software in your own server. But uh, since Moodle is a free software, you can host it in your own uh, server. And more than these free and uh, other things, so you can you can use this the Moodle or a LMS platform in your own language. For example, like if I would want to for it for the Madras people, so if you want to uh, change your the the entire interface of the Moodle in uh, Tamil, so you can do that. That freedom is there in this the LMS the Moodle platform. So you can customize. Uh, or you can you can use the the software in your own language. So that's a the good thing about the as well as for both uh, for the educators or for the learners also. It will be very easy for access the all the required learning resources. So that's a good thing about the Moodle thing. So that means you can customize your software in your own language and. Uh, yeah, as I said, it is very easy to use. So anyway, we will start the answer session later after this uh, this particular slide. But uh, it's very simple interface. Like for example, uh, along with the content, if somebody wants to access all the additional resources or they want to see the calendar, or there are wide range of features are available on the Moodle, which are free. So all those things are very easy to use, easy to access. Okay, easy to control also. So that's a good thing about the, the Moodle. And uh, yeah, this software will support uh, both on your computer and as well as mobile. It means basically, if you host your own Moodle server or if you are using some other hosting Moodle software, so easily you can access those courses or uh, you know even learners can also easily participate in these courses using mobile or a, or a computer. So that's a, that flexibility is there in the Moodle platform uh yeah so since again it is connected to free software so since it is a free and open source software it's always it will give the latest update of the software so means people can or institute can always they can update the software to the latest version without investing any of the without investing much uh, resources so yeah but be before going to the next slide so any doubts or any comments or anything you want to ask? Sir, uh, can we uh, install it on WordPress-based website? Uh, yes, you can install this uh, LMS with a WordPress site. Mm -hmm. 
but WordPress is an app. It's, a, more like CMS. it's more for to create a websites, not for the you know creating a courses. But no, if you that, in your institution, if you are already using a WordPress, but along with that, you can install Moodle also. Okay, okay, that's what I wanted to know, right? Because I have a website with not this, inside uh, the WordPress. not inside the not inside the WordPress, but you okay. can install along with that. Okay. okay. Whatever the WordPress is required, like database or any other requirement, the software requirement, the same requirement also Moodle is uh, is needed. Okay. So any other questions? And what about server space? How much space it will uh, require? As such? Yeah, so it's depending it on it's depending on how many how many courses you are going to conduct and how much content you are going to put. The, what are the kind of content for example if you are going to uh, put a lot of video resources in your courses then definitely it will take more more space in your server so it's depending on the kind of uh, the resources you are putting up on the model. if it is only text-based resources then it don't take much space any any questions sir okay yeah, please go ahead, sir. Someone has unmuted your mic. So I'm not on the on the Google Meet screen, so I can't see. I can see. Okay, so it's, it's no doubts. Okay, so uh, yeah, so let's go to the some data about the Moodle users. The currently, if you take a the whole world. So uh, around uh, 165,000 of uh, the courses or sites are installed this Moodle uh, website. So I hope all of you are able to see this, uh, the data screen. Uh, around 4 million of courses are already created using this Moodle platform. This is across the universe. So there are around that 35 million of users are already using this Moodle platform. If it comes to India, so India is the eighth uh, uh, eighth largest the country is using model. Okay. So now let's uh, start accessing our uh, the course which we have created for this uh, program. So uh, as Guru Sir said, we are already yesterday we have shared all the details to access our Moodle course, but let's start with the answer straight away. So to access, uh, as I said previously, so if you want to access course material or a course, you just need a browser, web browser, whether you're using a mobile phone or a, or a computer, you just need a web browser. But there is, for mobile users, there is an app also. So if people, wants, if people don't want to log in every time on a mobile browser, you can, you, you can install Moodle app in your phone. So I will show you where to access this Moodle app and other things. And to access a uh, Moodle course, so let's, uh, I'll take the PDF file only, the, the one which I shared yesterday evening. So this is the file I shared it uh, yesterday. So uh, here, if you look at the, the first section, so I'm already given the link for our, uh, the particular course for this course. So I'm just going to click on this link, or if somebody wants to note on the link, you can uh, note on this link. Sorry, I'm just uh, just one second. So. Okay, I hope all of you are able to see the, the PDF file which I opened now. Can you confirm me too? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's doing. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. So let's start with this uh, PDF file. So if you are already accessing this PDF file, so on the top there is a, a link for our Moodle course. So you can directly click on this link so that it will open in your browser, web browser. Sir, I have a question, sir. 
Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, yesterday I logged on in this link, Karnataka Education, uh, this year. Yeah. Yeah. So I, okay. I, was, I, I was successful in uh, logging in. But mm -hmm. today, as I am trying to you know, log in it again, it says that the site cannot be reached. Is it a problem of my internet connection or something? Uh, the site is busy or something like that? Can no, the site, site is working absolutely uh, fine. So because, see, look at my screen. So I'm able to access the same okay. courses from my system. And I hope uh, others are also able to access the, the site. Yes, we, we can. Anyway, I will show you how to log in, but uh, you're able to see the screen now, this yes, page, sir. when you click on that link. OK. OK, then I will show you how to log in. So let's take one example of any username here. So all of you, you can access your user. You can see your username and the password. Right now, the password is same for everyone. But I will, after the, after you log into your account, I will show you how to change the password also, so that if anybody wants to change your password, you can change it. Yes. Okay. So uh, once you come to this link, so you just click on the login button. On the top right side, always you'll have a login button if you are not at logged in. Then it will ask you to enter a username and the password, so you can access your username and the password from this sheet. Uh, my username I already entered here, and this is my password. I'm just zooming in so that everybody can see. Uh, okay, so I'm going to click on this login. So once I click on this login, okay, so this is the home page of our uh, the LMS, the Moodle system. Since I am part of many of uh, our other courses, it is showing the, the courses list on the left side. In your case, once you logged in, so since you are only the part of this particular course, the refresher course, you can able to see this one day, uh, this course. So click on this uh, refresher course, the course heading here, so that it will take you to the actual course page. Okay. So what I will do, I will stop now. All of you try to open open your, the the PDF file which I shared it in your your WhatsApp group. Please we take that username and the password and please log into the course. We opened your PDF also. Yeah, now you can just open a browser, sir, and uh, try to log into this course. So, can you please send the link again? Ah, sure. You can uh, you just open the PDF file name at the, at the top. Yes, there's a link. Yes, sir. Your presentation BPTV. Uh... Anyway, anyway, I will share it in WhatsApp group also. Sir, invalid login, please check in. It's coming like that, sir. Uh, that means please try check your uh, the password and the username you know pass okay. all the yeah password is just a lower case ugc zero three two zero two three there is yes, a date sir. of it please try it right once again shall i change that sir you can change it madam i will show you how to change it yes all of you please try to log into the course Sir, we opened your slide. Sir, it is not opening, sir. Uh, can you take a screenshot and post it in a WhatsApp group, ma'am? My colleague, Iris, sir, will help you. Yes, sir. Sir, even I am not able to log in, sir. I have done uh, yesterday. I have changed the password also. Mm -hmm. But now it is showing the site cannot be reached. That means you are in. Please check your internet, sir. Please check all your internet connection. Sir, I have logged in and changed my password. Great, sir. Great. Thank you. So please just tell me how to change the password. Sure, ma'am. I'll show you. One, once everyone log into the course page, then I will take I'll you to the password. So please check your internet because others are able to log in. That means uh, you may have some internet connection. Sir, it is open in my mobile, sir, but not in my laptop. 
opening in your phone okay hey, mobile yeah mobile but it's not opening the laptop hmm can mobile i can able to use it sir yeah yeah you can use it in your phone uh, okay right now i'm on the phone mobile. browser what you can do is on the top uh, on the top right side you will have a three dots button especially if you are using a file uh, chrome or any other browser yeah, click on that like and internet. select a desktop website okay and uh, i hope others are able to log, log in please all of you can confirm in a chat window who are logged in please say just logged yes, in or yes. done so yes okay. sir we are attempting your quiz <laughs> you are already <laughs> adapting the quiz Yeah, don't worry, sir. Yeah, you can. if you are already familiar with the model, you can go. Ahead. Hey, send you what? Uh, sorry, send you WhatsApp screenshot, sir. It is not. Um, there is I, no three dots on my phone, sir. Okay, no problem. I will see. Where I have to go for desktop? Sir, I have logged in, but I couldn't download that Oco Screen uh, uh, NG video creation tool. If I Abdul, sir, better to use a Google Chrome browser. You are using some other browser. Maybe try to use a Abdul, uh, sorry, Chrome browser so that uh, you will have that Chrome option. Browser. Otherwise, this is also fine. Just try to. Anyway, today you are not going to create uh, create any courses. You will just access all the uh, the resources which were already uploaded on this course. so you can just be in this same browser and you try to use this okay okay, okay. thank you let's go in mana you are asking something sir that oco screen ng couldn't download sir it is saying no problem you... don't worry. now you just focus on moodle and the course try to access this course so at the end of this session uh, anyway i am going to show you how to install uh, both concept map and sorry free plane and uh, oco screen okay sir is that fine now okay sir till now i didn't log in sir uh what is the error madam you you can also take a screenshot and send it to me yes sir or try to access try to access the same course from your bro, uh, mobile browser let's see okay so shall i go ahead now i'll come back to the moodle course page now okay so i hope all of you are able to uh, log into the course and you are able to see this uh, title so this is a course title actually what you are able to see this is a refresher course in e content development and online pedagogy in social science teaching so this is a course name and the site name is the the site address is karnatakaeducation.org.in/lms that is a link okay so once you logged into the, this uh, the moodle then you can able to see this sections here so currently if you look at the screen if you look at my screen so there is one general section here so these are the sections actually so these sections you can create like in our course we have created a day wise sections like for example this is day 1 the section and day 2 day 3 so likewise but uh, the uh, the faculties can create a courses by week wise or by topic wise also so when we when we do hands on tomorrow so i will show you how to do all those things but in for this course we have created a section by day wise so since we are in a day 2 so this is the day 2 agenda and uh, i just added some resources about uh, today's session here okay so this is the way you can you can also create a courses you can add a text material you can add a videos you can add a additional then pdf files ready materials so hyperlinks everything can be given in this moodle course so if you look at the screen here if you go back to the general section under this course all the general instruction for example the course related announcement if faculty wants to do any course related announcement so they can do announcement under this section so that all the participants who are registered for this course 
they will get a notification or they will get an email uh, from this course about the, uh, the announcement. So same way, I have given an hyperlink, the same Google Meet hyperlink I have given here, so that if people wants to log into the webinar, the Google Meet webinar, so you can log into Moodle and click on this link to join the webinar. So this way also you can, like if you don't get the Google Meet link from WhatsApp, you can do it. Uh, one of your mic might, might be unmuted. Please, can you mute your mic? Okay, so this is the course related announcement. If I click on this right now, there is no announcement made but as a faculty uh, they can they can create announcements here for example a faculty wants to announce to the uh, students about the assignment submission or if they want to if they are planning to conduct a uh, online the class so they can uh, make an announcement here so that all the students will get an email notification so that way the announcement can be used. It's like a digital notice board for this particular course. And uh, so apart from these two links, there is a link called submit your assignment. Right now, uh, uh, we can go through later on this submit your assignment. But before that, the, after that, there is attendance and there are some few links which uh, we just now guru sir was discussing with you all with all of you that installing a concept map tool free plane and also video creation tool called focusing so those two links are already given under this general section if anybody want, wants to install and you are not getting the link please log into the moodle course and click on these two respective links to install that app okay so, for example, some of you are saying that you are not able to install Voco screen. So, please come to this screen. The same instruction which I've already shared in a WhatsApp group, the same link only. So, open this link. Uh, so, it will redirect to the another website called uh, Teacher Network. So, here you will have a detailed instruction about the installation. So, if people are using a Windows machine, you can follow this instruction. If anybody are using a Ubuntu or a Linux based any other OS, you can follow the, the below instruction here. And some of you have a confusion about the which version you want to download. So when you click on this particular link to download, okay, always try to download the current version. Don't try to use it a beta version. Okay. Uh, try to go to the current version section and try to download this depending on which OS you are using. Okay, so yeah, if you look at my screen here, uh, on the top right side, it is showing uh, my username. Okay, so this is my username, but now if I want to change the password because all of you have a common password now, but if you want to change the password, there is a section called profile. So you want to go to profile section to change your password or a username or any other personal information. Let's try to do that. So click on this on the top right side, click on your username. Okay. And go to the profile. So under profile, uh, you can see this, there is a section called user details. So by clicking on the edit profile, I can change all this information. For example, this is my email ID. And if I want to change my email ID, I can change it. So, and uh, my full name. So all this basic information, I can change it from this profile section. The same way, if I want to change my password, then I again click on the top right side and go to the preferences so that uh, all the all your uh, accounts related settings can be done under this preferences. So right click, go to preferences. 
Then once you come to the preferences, all of you look at here. There are some three sections are there. One is the user account section, roles, and blocks. So now we'll just focus on the user account profile section. Under this, there is an edit profile, and the second one is the change password. I hope all of you are able to uh, see this all the text comfortably. Uh, please tell me, otherwise I will zoom in uh, this browser window. Is the text size, text size, is it fine? Yes, sir, it's fine, sir. Fine, sir. Fine. Yeah. So once you go to the preferences, click on this change password. OK. Then first, it will ask you to enter your current password. The current password you can access from your the PDF file. And you can create a new password from this below two boxes. OK. So but you have to follow this criteria to make a strong password. Can all of you try to uh, change your password now? Click on your username, go to preferences and try to change your password. Sir, we can we cannot open uh, in both uh, sir in mobile as well as laptop. You can open it, sir. No problem. You can do it. Hello, Bhupat, sir. Are you able to change the password? Are you yes, able to sir. log into the password? Yeah. The very first time we log in, at the, at the time itself, we say this. Oh, great. OK. What about others? Shamala, madam, Victor, sir. Change my password, sir. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, we already installed, sir. Uh, which one, sir? Mo Moodle is not required to install. You just open it. No, no, I already open Moodle and uh, uh -huh. you change the password also. I'll do Okay, whoever changed the password, just log out, log out from a uh, Moodle section. Again, try to log in with the, the new password. Sir, I have changed the password, so it is showing the day one, day two, and all that. 
So what are yes. we supposed to do that, sir? Great, ma'am. You're in the right place. Okay. Just wait Thank for you. others to I come from. So that Thank you. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank you. Okay, so I, shall I go to the next uh, part of this session? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to the Moodle course again. Okay, so let's go back to the, the course page now. Since I have a left side panel, I hope all of you are also have a, the left side panel like this. You can directly click on the course title on the left side under my courses. So it will take you to the, the main course page. Okay. So uh, what I will do right now for this course, I'm the faculty for this course. So I'll change my role to student so that you, I will also have a same interface, which you are also. Right? So I'll go to change role. And I'll take it as a student role. Because for this particular course, I'm, uh, we are all faculty and you are all as a uh, student, you are practicing this course, uh, uh, accessing this course, so that I also changed my role for temporary purpose. So now uh, my interface and all your interfaces are, should be same. So even when you create your own courses on a Moodle, you can try all these things, student switch to role, all those things. So it is under on the top right side, there is the option, option called switch to role. Okay. So yeah. Uh, sir, excuse uh, me, sir. Sir, can you please uh, yes, um, uh, just uh, take the trouble of showing how to change role once again because I just lost the connectivity. No problem. So just click on, on the top right side okay. on the username. Click on that and you can change to there is a option called switch role. Uh, sir, I'm not getting any option. Yeah, because because now. yeah, all of you are you're just a student for this course. That's why you will not get this option. What okay. I huh. what I was saying is hmm. when you create your own courses on a Moodle. Okay and you enrolled as a faculty, then you will have an option called switch role. OK, sir. OK, sir. Thank you, sir. OK. OK, so uh, under general section, yeah, these are the things we have given here. So also, there is an option called attendance. Like as a faculty, as a course instructor, I, we can take attendance through Moodle also. OK, so uh, then if I go to day one, so day one, I think, is there. So just an uh, agenda we have. If you go to day two, so whatever I'm clicking on here, as I said, these are the sections. So sections we have created by day wise. But this can be customized. Like you can create a sections by topic wise, unit wise, module wise. So those kind of things you can do it when you're creating your own course. So this is a model. So I will just give a uh, five minutes time. Please, all of you, uh, read this section, OK? And if you get time, so you can you can play this video. Otherwise, you just uh, make sure you just uh, go through this uh, text part. Please take a five minutes and go through this uh, section.
stop or something Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So I hope all of you are. Uh, thank you for the confirmations. So we have changed the password. I hope uh, you are also gone through the day two section. OK, so let's uh, move on to the next part. So uh, as I was saying, so since it is a online course, so you can try to give all the kind of resources related to your course. So for example, if you look at my day two section, there is only text information at the beginning. But at the bottom, there is a one video also. That means when you are creating a, uh, courses, so you can embed some good videos related to your topic, or you can embed images, you can give hyperlinks, all those things, you can do it very easily. So uh, if you look at, at the bottom of the, the Moodle section, the day two section, uh, here's given some uh, links here. Uh, so the next feature of this Moodle is the, the forum. For example, uh, like many of you are saying that uh, the link is missed or uh, the PDF file you are not able to see it in a WhatsApp group because that, that is a, the WhatsApp will work in a different uh, way. The purpose is different. But here, if you look at the discussion forum, so if if faculty and the, the students want to discuss about this course or any of the topic under this course, so they can use the platform called discussion forum. So under day two, if you go to day two, there is a link called discussion forum. Okay, so if you open this discussion forum, uh, oh, oh, already Victor Sir has also created one discussion topic, the relevance of e-learning in India. Okay, great. So if you look at these uh, topics here, so there are already two topics are posted here under discussion forum. So one is posted by Dr. Uh, Victor sir, and the another one is uh, I just posted about the, this is my topic. So the, this is the discussion topic. So uh, if you click on this discussion topic, so the top, uh, so it is saying that share your thoughts, opinion on how digital technologies impacting our society. So this is the topic for this discussion so uh, you can just uh, click on the replay and give your inputs or a comments or a opinion about this topic so this way uh, teachers and the learners can come together in online and they can use this discussion forum platform to discuss about the topic okay so uh, for example i'll i'll request all of you go to the discussion forum and go to this topic digital technology and society so you can click on this reply button below my the uh, the comment post click on the reply and you can give your opinion about this topic. 
so this way you can all of you can discuss about the topic Do some entry. Let's see. I told this. Please, all of you, go to the mode of discussion forum date under day two. Open any topic. You can open like if you are interested to participate in the the first topic, the relevance of e-learning in India. Please go to that. Click on that and click on the replay. So when you click on the replay, apart from the text information, you can also, if you go to uh, advanced, you can embed some images, you can add some references. For example, you have some hyperlinks related to the discussion. You can give all those things under this uh, message box. Can all of you do this now? Amit is saying the screen sharing is on. Instead of the presentation, list of people. That is your intention only. List of people model. That is what you want to hmm. show. Because slide you are not showing now. No, no, I'm not yeah. showing sure slide. Maybe you can see on the side what is. What yeah, is I'm not yeah. Guessing. See, when I, if I refresh my this page, discussion forum page, so I can see the last, the reply posted by Dr. Pinky Ma'am on this date. So on the discussion forum topic, so you can able to see all these details. For example, who was last posted and how many replies we have got for this particular topic and other things. So there is one subscribe button, which I will tell you what is the use of this subscribe button also. Sir, I send the... Sorry, madam. Hello. Hello. Sir, we are able to hear you, sir. Madam was saying that she has replied to the... Uh, okay, okay. Okay. Thank you, Arisa. Arisa is my colleague. So, sir, is, yeah. Oh, go ahead, sir. Sir, under the discussion forum, there is one attachment is there. Ha, ha. What is it? Somebody has given a reference uh, a document, maybe. Where is this, sir? Under discussion forum. Oh, here. You are talking about the, on the course section. Here. You are talking about this section, right, sir? Yeah, this section only. Yeah, I will tell you what is the, the, this 
other two things but to just go to this discussion forum and try to participate in this any of this topic okay okay Okay. All of you, at least you should participate in any one of this uh, uh, topic, minimum. Or you can go to the, the second topic also. For example, Parim has replied to my uh, post. Sorry, it has a post. OK. Sorry, madam. Go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to know what would be the difference between Moodle and a Google Classroom in in the sense which one's better or which one has got better um, characteristics or uh, better features? See, in terms of features or in terms of safety, data privacy, everything, so the Moodle is better because it, it you will host it in your own server. And this is a free and open source. You can custom, always you can customize your software. Okay, you can create a number of courses. And right now the Google Classroom is free to use. It is not completely free. And sometimes like, so from tomorrow, if they charge something, then you have to let it to pay to use their, uh, the Google Classroom. Whereas the Moodle is completely free and open source. Means you can customize your software based on the, the institution requirement. You can create any number of uh, courses once you host it on your server. So all the features are there. Okay, okay. So basically, yeah. Google, so Google Class Classroom is mainly Google. Google Classroom is just like an online classroom. So ah. if you are going to create, uh, conduct some online classes, the Google maybe, maybe Google Classroom is better. But if you are running in a courses, uh, then the Moodle is the best platform. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So there is one problem with uh, Google Classroom that uh, who hmm. has joined. Uh, mm. you know, cannot be known because the mm. name uh, no gets reflected in the form of their email IDs. Yes, so it becomes uh, you know sometimes uh, you, know, you can't you can't more than, mm. uh, sometimes right. more than your students the people. Will be there. Yes, so. that's true. Also, here you will have a restricted access. So, for example, only if you give access to the the learners, they can only able to log into the course. Otherwise, the generally other people's can't access without having a login. That is one thing. So the good thing about the login with the, the user accounts is you can track each and every activities and by students. For example, uh, I can easily say how many of you are already participated in a discussion forum. How many of you are clicked on the the Voco screen and the concept map uh, installation link in the first section. So all this by each and every activity, it will track and it will it will create in a log. I will show you how to access that also by end of this session. I will show you how to do that. And uh, yeah, so I'll just refresh this. I want to show one more thing. OK, 21 replies are received now if i click on this then i will know uh, who are replied to the or who are participated in the discussion forum so yeah so very uh, if you observe this uh, discussion forum for each and every post there is a reply here for example uh arun sir has replied to my post and then uh, Danya ma'am's reply to Arna ma'am uh, post. So instead of that, if somebody wants to reply to my post only, again, they have to come to my post and click on the reply. This is like a WhatsApp or any other social media. You will reply. If you want to reply to any particular message, you will slide it left or right to reply to the, that particular message, right? The same way, if you want to reply to any particular post here from this list, you have to go to that post and click on the reply then it will reply to that particular post i hope all of you understood what i uh, told now okay good so let's go back to my discussion forum topic here and uh, if you look at the the top menu here,
there is an option called add a new discussion topic for example now people are discussing about this uh, digital technology and society uh, another topic but if if you feel that you want to create a one more topic on your subject uh, which are the news you want you can easily you can go to uh, add a new discussion topic and you can create a post here basically you need a two things one is the subject of your topic the discussion topic and your opinion or your message about this talk discussion forum once you do this click on the post forum so that you can create your own discussion topic so for example all of you have taken all of you have chosen some of the topics to create a e content during this program and uh, about that uh, the chosen topic if you want to ask others opinion or others input you can create a discussion forum and ask their help or uh, inputs about the topic or you you are some for example you have created some resources you, you have created like morning ajit kumar sir was saying that you can create a e text you can create a video resource so if you have created some resources and you want to take a opinion or you want to take a feedback from the others so you can use this uh, discussion forum you can do this also in a whatsapp or somebody someone will say we can use a whatsapp but whatsapp the problem is always when you keep posting the messages your original message will will be disappear after some time so again searching for that particular topic or for, for any particular discussion is very you know it's almost you know, impossible so discussion forum all the topic related discussion will be in one place so that's a good thing about the discussion okay so now if you come back to the the top the course title here below that there is a hyperlinks here so for example right now i am in a discussion forum but directly i want to go to the uh, the home page of the course page so directly i can come here and i can click on this okay so this is a shortcut to access any the course sections directly from your course page and on the left side i'll just uh, briefly explain all this features here since i am already entered to my particular course here then all the options which are able to see on the left side here all these options are related to this course only okay so there are two ways one is if you if you come out from this course like for example i'll come out from this course and right now i'm in a just uh, the home page of this entire site lm model site right now if you look at my the dashboard here on the left side i have a relate uh, options related to the site site home calendar calendar means irrespective of any course it is showing all the events related to all the courses and other uh, and under that there is a my courses so these are the, these are the courses that i am faculty for this course so if i click on this particular course i will go to that particular course and then the left side the dashboard will change based on the the course you will choose so right now it is showing a participants participants means if i click on this i can able to see only the participants who are registered for this course so these are the participants and if you look at the participants list you can see you can sort by names and you can also sort by last access to the course so by if i click on this if you look at the data here so for example bhupati sir 18 seconds ago he has used the course okay but if i click on this it will sort by the last access so some of the faculties or some of the par participants they have never access this course for example you can see all those names here okay so right now if you want to know how many participants are there you can see at the bottom left side show all 66 that means in this course there are totally 66 participants are there if i want to see all their all the 66 participants in one page i can click on this 66 now this is the data of all the participants 
Okay, so this is a participant section. The same way, if you go to badges, badges means basically faculty. If you want to encourage part the students to complete activity, if somebody has completed an activity or if somebody has participated in a quiz and they got a yes mark, so you if you want to encourage them, you want to give some badges. You can create a badges here and you can keep adding that. Okay, uh, right now this course doesn't have any badges here, but you can create your own badges. Yeah. Okay, and there are some competencies like how the participants can access the courses and also the activities and how to make sure that all the activities are complete. So all those tracks, they can use these competencies and grades, it's based on the faculties. For example, we can design a uh, grade sheet based on the number of activities we have given in the course. So that's how we can design a grades right now uh, in this course we are not designing the grade part but apart from that if you go if you look at all the other sections these are the sections name for example general is the one section day one day two so these are the sections again okay again from here it is the site related like overall the moodle course related dashboard so this way you can as a participants as a student you can able to see the about other participants and you can see your own badges, how many badges you have got. Okay, so all these things you can access from this course as a student. But I will, because if you look at my role now, I'm just a student now. That's why I can able to see the data. I can't do any changes in this. Okay, so I'll go back to the day two again. I want to show one more interesting things in the Moodle, especially for example, uh, someone is asking about this, the, what are these links, right? I will explain that also. Before that, if you look at all these, the links or additional resources, in front of that, there are some, one small square box is there. If you look at my own screen, so out of, uh, I think someone, mic is, uh, have some issues. Uh, unmuted. I'm getting some buzz sound. I hope all of you are able to uh, listen my voice. You're able to, right? Yes, sir. It's clear. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Please, all of you, you can unmute your mic again. Uh, yeah. If you look at this title here, your progress. That means wherever the tick mark is there, I have completed this activity. For example, each and every resources or every activity, it will consider as a one uh, activity or one resource so if you want to complete this right now it is showing only out of four per three it is already put a tick mark that means out of four activities or resources i have finished these three activities participation one is i clicked on this discussion forum and i created a topic so that means it's put a tick mark here that means the this activity is done the same way i was just uh, before the session i just click on this explore fast best of those link that's why it is already put the tick mark here that means this activity is also finished by the student and the same way but if you look at the third one right now it is showing the the empty box that means i have not yet participated in this activity what is this activity this is a quiz so why i am telling this is Apart from the text, apart from the videos, if morning also we are, you know, Ajit sir was say, keep saying that your content should be, should have some interactive kind of information. So, uh, so Moodle will allow you to create some interactive kind, kind of resources. So in that quiz is also one of the useful activity to make it course uh, more interactive. So. Uh, right now, I have not clicked on this. That's why it is not showing the completion status. So I will click on this. And then I have to attempt the quiz. OK. As a student, I can't do any changes in the quiz or any other activities. But if I change back my role to faculty or a moderator of this course, then I can able to do all the changes or I, uh, revise all this content 
as per my need. So do or die is the famous slogan given by anybody knows answer here? Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi. Yes. So you can see the description here. This is a question number one, not yet answered because I have not clicked on this says marked out of one marks. Okay. So I'm clicked on this Mahatma Gandhi. I'm going to click on next. Then the true. second question is a true. Who will give the right answer for this question? Lala Amarnath. Lala Amarnath. Yes, exactly. Yes. Evo Hughes. Evo? Hughes. Yes, exactly. So now if you look at that, once I choose any option here, there's an option called clear my choices. Like if I want to change my choices, always I can click on this clear my choice. So always I can do that and I can click on next. The last, maybe more is there. Who started the first English newspaper? Jay Aiki, sir. Jay Aiki, yes. OK, Jay Aiki. Then the last one. Maybe. Nagarjuna. Nagarjuna. So this is like, for example, the, all the previous questions were the Multiple choice are a true or false, but this is the drag and drag, uh, drag and drop option. So, for example, here we have given a four options, but the right answer should be drag and drop it on the right in the box. So, once you do that, the, the since it is a last question, so it is asking a finish attempt. So, click on that. Now, all the answers are saved, but still, uh, my submission is not submitted. So, look at here submit all and finish okay but if you are not sure about all the answers you have given you want to re-attempt this you can again click on the re-attempt but i'm going to click on submit all submit all and finish look at here total marks for out of six i got six marks i took two minutes 43 seconds for this completion Grade out 10 out of 10. So this is how it will give the response. So, so now if I go back to my day two sections, and if you look at my the quiz also, look at this icons here. Now it is showing the tick mark. That means I have completed this activity as well. So this way you can. Uh, you can see the each and every progress of the individual learners. Even you can export this data into spreadsheet or some other format. That also I will show you at the end of this. But uh, can all of you quickly come come to this day two, and can all, can all of you participate in this uh, last four items here? Actually, first one is just a link. Like if you click on this, it will open a link. It will open one more page like this. Click on this open. Page. So this is just an workshop, uh, you know, another website. You just open it so that it will mark it as a tick mark. That means you are, uh, it will consider as a, you have gone through that page. And discussion forum, anyhow, you have already participated, all of you. And now let's uh, participate in this quiz and uh, let's see uh, whether it will give a tick mark for this. Can all of you do this now? Once you do this, please uh, let me know. Uh, sir, um, actually, for discussion forum, if we have replied to a comment, I think the tick does not come. Yes, uh, you have to create a post. Is, you have to create a post, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, thank you. That all the configuration faculty can do. For example, for this course, I have designed this discussion forum. Only the uh, the participant. Uh, at least they should reply to one topic and they have to create one topic, uh, the discussion topic. Then only it will mark its tick. But whereas if I am creating a, one more course, there I can just give a one reply is enough for completion of activity. So that customization is possible in this. Okay. You can customize well. yeah. All this and sun thing, tomorrow we have a uh, session for Moodle and sun. 
So all of you are going to create your own course using some other mo free Moodle hosting platform called Genomia. Here you are going to create a courses. But now, please, all of you, go to quiz and try to uh, complete this activity. Answer, yeah, please. Okay, okay. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can What's Hi. Hi, hi, green. Green, I can have a Okay, others also please respond or uh, since I'm not looking at the, the chart window. Uh, so people are responding. Right, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, I'm seeing that. Thank you. You're done. Uh, Suman sir got all the photos. Okay, great. Here, the last one is again, it is an attachment. It is a PDF file. The presentation which I'm using it for my the current session, for this session, I just uploaded here. So, Maning Hasa, Ajit Kumar was saying that uh, he will share his uh, slides with all of you. Maybe if he shared with the WhatsApp group, we can upload it on the on in this section only so that everybody can access the all the presentation in one place. So, this is my presentation file, which I'm using it now. If anybody wants to download, you can just click on this and it will open a, uh, a slide presentation here. I click on this download mark and so that it will download to your computer. So once you do this, then this, the last one also, put, it will put a tick mark. That means that your activity is complete. Okay, with this, I think uh, it's four o'clock now. Can we take some five to 10 minutes break now? I think at least five minutes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Yeah, now I, th I think we can take a break now. If somebody wants to practice in the Moodle, please go ahead and keep practicing. But uh, if anybody wants, if you have completed the activity, please, you can take the break. But please finish the activities and then you can
Yeah, sorry, I had some network issue, so that uh, I just rejoined to the session. I hope people are finished the uh, uh, all the activities. Yes, sir. We have. Uh, I think some of them are doing. Uh, mm. As of now, we have a uh, five minutes break has been. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. After that, uh, we can uh, yeah, res yes. resume our session.
I think it's four now. I think uh, another one or two minutes we can wait. Then we can start. Is that okay? Shall we wait for another two, three minutes? So that... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and uh, it's four two now. I think we can start the. Uh... Sorry. Yes. Uh, just a five minute uh, break again, Gurmurti again. So, I wanted to just ask a quick question of all the participants. What are the kinds of uses we can think for Moodle? Is it useful for our work? Is it relevant to the uh, you know, course, what we are doing now? In what way Moodle is relevant? In what way it is useful? In what way it may not be useful? Can participants just share their thoughts? You can uh, unmute and speak. You can type in the chat window whatever is convenient. Just five minutes if we spend on this discussion, then I'll hand over back to Rakesh. So why Moodle? Is it useful? In what ways is it useful? Yeah, myself, Suman Chakravarti. Yes, sir. Uh, I think um, it's really essential and useful when we go for blending mode uh, education. I'm from West Bengal. In our college, uh, there is mm. a face to face learning as well as uh, we are taking few classes on online mode uh, as far as mm. a NAC based type that, and mm. also NEP, uh, mm. National Education Policy, uh, they're seeking that type of uh, blended mode. That's why it's mm. Moodle. We have previously, I have used uh, the Microsoft Team, MS Team. Mm. So mm. it's essential, I think. Mm. And also face-to-face -face, uh, education is also essential. I don't want to mean only Google, only uh, Google Meet or this type of uh, platform is useful. Both are useful for blended mode. Thank mm. you. So you are saying blended mode, uh, sir. What do you mean by blended mode? Uh, blended or hybrid, suppose uh, in five days, we'll take face-to-face mm. uh, -face, uh, classes in classroom. And mm. uh, in our off day, because we are we have the five days, uh, so we have like two days. So in these two days, mm. at least one or two classes we'll take uh, through mm. online basis from our home, mm. uh, maybe from hostel. Uh, for mm. students, those are not attending the classes or students, those who have already attended. Mm. Uh, mm. That's why we can use uh, this type of platform. Mm. So I just want to elaborate on this point. Uh, uh, like sir rightly said, 
the Moodle is not intended to replace the physical. It's not like yeah, right exactly. now what we are doing fully online course. Now we are doing online because everybody saw it is in West Bengal. I am in Bangalore. Somebody is in Chennai. Somebody is in uh, Kottayam. So therefore we are doing an online program and it is having its own value simply because if it we insisted all of us have to come to Calicut, many of us yes, will exactly. not be able to attend the exactly. program without the physical attendance. That is it. But at the same time, one important point I want to emphasize to all the participants. I first learned Moodle in a program where physically I was present in the institution. So I was in Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. That's when I first used Moodle. And I used to think when I'm anywhere there in the institution, why are we using Moodle? Now, that is very important because let's say all of you are teaching in your institutions. You're anyway meeting your students on a regular basis. Then why do you need Moodle? I realized that even if you are doing physical interactions with the students, what happens? Our physical interaction is never adequate time. You want to explain something, time is not enough for that. You want students to discuss it, there is no time enough for that. You want individual students to share their views, there is not enough time for that. You are spending too much time on going through the material instead of discussing the material. So even if you are having the regular interactions, let's say teachers university, you are doing some program for teachers, face to face, you are doing some pre-service program. But even for them, Moodle is important because it is a concept called fl flipped classroom. I don't know if you have heard this term. There is a very nice concept called flipped classroom. What it means is in the olden days or even now, you know, we the teacher will spend 80% of the time giving information to the students. So if you're a history teacher, you will be telling Second World War what all happened. First World War what all happened. You are spending 80% of your time giving information to the students. This information can be read by the student directly before they come to the class. In the class, you can discuss why did Churchill and Stalin, why did they collaborate and why did they sign an agreement in Yalta? What could be the reason why Stalin and Hitler signed the non-aggression pact? Is Stalin a friend of Churchill or a friend of uh, Hitler? That kind of discussion when we do in the class, the learning of history will really be beneficial. Most of our social science education, uh, pardon me, I'm saying this very frankly and I am sure uh, some of you will agree with me. One of the biggest problems in social science education is it is very content based. The history teacher will give dates and give facts. The geography teacher will tell this is this, that is that. So most of the time in social science, we spend the time giving content information to the students. But content education is no longer useful because content can be available to the student anytime. But what is of value in social science education is the discussions and the complexities connected to that particular uh, topic or the perspective, a sociological perspective, a political science perspective, a anthropological perspective. This every discipline brings its perspective. The teacher's job is to provide the perspective for which classroom discussions are required. So even if you are doing physical interactions with students, like let's say in West Bengal, you are actually interacting with the students. My suggestion is you can still do Moodle because reading material you share on Moodle itself. Everybody has got a phone. They will read the material on Moodle. In the class, don't waste your time giving the information. Start the discussions. That is what is called flip classroom. In the olden days, school classroom used to be for giving information. Assignment will be done at home. In the flip classroom, it is ulta. Reading is done at home. And the discussion, which is a more complex than is done in the classroom. So that one important concept I wanted to bring to you. Similarly, assignment submissions. Similarly, discussion forum. You all participated in discussion forum very briefly in the session before. In the classroom, when we are discussing an issue, let's say a topic in sociology or discussing gender, you might find that some of the boys are not really opening up because they feel very defensive about the topic about women's empowerment or even the girls are not opening up. But you don't have too much time in the classroom itself. You can do a discussion forum and ask. You create an environment which is friendly to, so that students start sending the messages in the discussion forum. And in our own work, we are working with pre-service students. Uh, that is our BA the college students. We work with them. We encourage them to share the feedback on each other's assignments in the discussion forum. More and more they do that. More and more they open up to one another. The classroom becomes a collaborative learning environment. So this phrase collaborative learning environment is very, very important. Moodle can be used to create because Moodle extends your class time. You are having only five classes in a week, three classes in a week, two classes in a week. But Moodle extends your interaction with the students beyond that two or three classes physically face to face time that you get with the students that you will optimize for the discussions. All the other activities, information on assignments, uh, announcements, all that you use Moodle for that. 
Moodle app is wonderful on the phone. That is not yet taught to you. We only use mobile phone. You might have gone directly to the URL and looked at Moodle. But Moodle has a wonderful phone app. And once the student is having the app on the phone, easily they can access Moodle and participate in the discussion forum. They can respond to quizzes. You can ask them to see videos. So the way you teach social sciences itself can change a lot if you use Moodle. So even if you are doing physical teaching in your institution, please install Moodle and use it. Anything else? And also, uh, Rakesh, explain. Like you are in Tamil Nadu, you are in Chennai. You might be having English medium also, Tamil medium for some students. Full Moodle can be customized in Tamil. It is already customized in Canada, Hindi, etc. So that way, it doesn't have to be. Language should never be a barrier for the learning process. Anybody else wants to share anything? Anything else in terms of Moodle? What is it useful? What is it not useful? So compared to Google Meet and Microsoft Teams, it is much superior because Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, primarily they are online interaction platforms. But Moodle is much more than that because content sharing, assignments, quizzes, discussion forums, uh, attendance, activity tracking, everything is possible to do in Moodle. Any other suggestion? Anything else? Anybody else wants to add? Why Moodle? What Moodle? But of course, any new application it takes time to learn. Let me be frank. When I went to Tata Institute in 2005, I started using Moodle. I used to curse Moodle. I used to curse everybody. I say, what is this platform? It is so difficult to use. After 20 years, now I am very comfortable. But I have sympathies for all of you because first time when you see it, it looks very, very. What is this animal? We don't know. It's a new animal in the forest. You have to understand the animal. It has uh, uh, four ears and two trunks and seven teeth. You have to understand what it is. Yes. Anybody else wants to uh, share? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so whatever. Uh, Go ahead. I think I think most of most of the things you have already covered. So the uh, thing is that I have been using. Uh, uh, I have used Blackboard, one of the uh, you know, well-known platforms. Um, I was uh, fa you know, doing a part-time faculty for Salzburg University. So we used to have uh, all those interactive uh, mechanisms to track all the students and all, you know, to uh, get their assignments, evaluate and all. Now, um, since the, uh, maybe before the COVID days itself, I was using Google Classroom too, uh, because uh, Blackboard is a paid version and it was only for university and I could not use it for my students uh, at my college. So uh, I was using Google Classroom to share the materials. But again, the problem was uh, I was not able to keep track of it. <clears throat> So who is reading it, who is not reading it, etc. So uh, I think this uh, uh, this was introduced to us uh, through uh, Kerala Higher Secondary Education, uh, uh, one of the webinars, uh, workshops or, as well. But uh, we were not uh, uh, given any, uh, what you call, further training to take it forward. You no, know? uh, One or two days training and then they left it off. The, the, there was no stakeholdership <laughs> kind of a thing. So when yes. this kind of training happens, what we need is... Uh, a continued stakeholdership uh, so that we you know become uh, accustomed to all the uh, tools that are being used here and um, you know we are able to use it continuously so otherwise what happens is uh, soon after this uh, you know 5 to 10 days of training uh, everyone will forget and run away from this so, so that has to happen so that that is one yeah. thing that i wanted to share right <clears throat> actually very important point i already mentioned when i began my session that there is a phenomenon of trained and user Trained and user means we undergo the training, but we don't use it. Once we don't use it, we forget it in a way. So institutionalizing the learning is a very important point you're making, sir. At the end of the day, individuals cannot make the change happen. You know, individuals have to sphere at the change. You have to go back to your institution. You have to persuade them. But all the institutions which are participating in this course, certainly you will be having some server space. Today in that server space, your college website will be there. Same server space, you go and you can tell install Moodle. We can help your institution. It is not a problem. You install Moodle. Moodle is free and open source. No need to pay any money. Not only money is not the main, main thing. See, Google Meet also, you may not pay money. But tomorrow, Google can withdraw it. Google will tell 40 minutes only, I'll give free. I will give only free to the institution, but not to the individual. All these proprietary, they put these conditions. But Moodle, there is no condition at all. Now or in the future, that is the main thing about free and open source. Rakesh also mentioned it. So your institution wants any support. We are happy to support because finally for us also, we are not doing this training program because we tick a uh, model we taught. But finally, we believe that free and open source platform should be available in every platform and every faculty should get the benefit of it. So completely, we are there to support anybody in this uh, program. 
and your institution should take it forward. Thank you, sir. Anybody else wants to say anything? Dr. Nisha, any points? Sir, uh, for the first time, I am using Moodle platform. Mm. And mm. Uh, my opinion is that it is uh, more effective in uh, providing assignments and uh, ensuring mm. the students participation because uh, if we teach them in the class uh, when we uh, give them some assignments uh, they will mm. uh, say excuses uh, mm. sometimes they they will say uh, they have they don't know or they because uh, if uh, it is a open forum and uh, there is no face-to-face -face, uh, interaction so they will not hesitate to express their opinion i think mm. in mm. even in the discussion forum and also, mm. if we give a discussion in the classroom, uh, only a few students will interact. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, if, if uh, we use a model platform, I think everyone will interact uh, exact, uh, correctly. Yeah, yeah. So here, one small caution I want to give is, all these are learned behavior. That is what our Govindan sir also was saying. Initially, when you do something, it is new. You know, for example, I'm sure first time when we started brushing our teeth, it is a new habit. And brushing the teeth will be complicated. You have to use the brush correctly. But after one or two years of brushing, you don't think in the morning when you put toothpaste and you start the work. So even discussion forum, initially students will be reluctant to do because they have to type in some text. They are not used to typing. They are not used to, you know, formulating long sentences. Talking is easy, but writing on a computer is not easy. So this learned behavior aspect is very important. That is education. So, Dr. Nisha, while students will be, on one hand, they'll be willing. On the other hand, you'll also find that they're very reluctant. You will keep telling them, please post on discussion forum. They will say, yes, yes, but they won't post. So, institutionally, we have to create a culture in the institution that discussion forum, if you don't participate, for example, it what we do, we always give some, assign, some marks for participation. So, you will say 10% of the course uh, marks is the quality of your participation, not simply quantity that I just typed the yes, I agree, and then you are posted. But the quality of your comments on the discussion forum also becomes important. Therefore, you are encouraging the students to move into a new behavior of learning. So collaborative learning, offline learning, blended learning, flipped classroom, all these concepts to implement. It is a time period. It will not happen in an instantaneous manner. But faith is important. If you have the faith that it will work, certainly it will work. Yeah. Anybody else has anything else to add? Or I will hand over to Rakesh. Anybody else? Dr. Pinky, how, how, how did you find Moodle? Um, so I really liked one uh, feature here is that you can actually track how each individual, whether each individual has gone through what is asked. Mm. One yeah. major problem we face is that uh, we post a lot of uh, things on uh, Google Classroom and uh, and the students say, yes, we'll go through it. But uh, in class, nobody responds because they haven't. Here we can track down as to who has listened to or read to what has been asked and accordingly ask questions or even give participation marks for that matter. Yeah. So if you see the Moodle course, what we have, what we have created for you, we have enabled what is called activity tracking. That's a feature. You can enable it. You don't need to enable it. In our course, we enabled it just so that we can learn how it works. So after every activity, there will be a box which will have a check mark. And we can configure in Moodle automatically to update it. For example, whenever somebody posts in a discussion forum, automatically it will update to the tick. Tomorrow, you can get a report. Who all didn't participate? Rather than going and checking ourselves manually, assignment submitted, quiz participated, discussion forum, anything, downloaded document for reading, saw a video, every activity we can track on Moodle. So that is, of course, it's a useful feature. Madam, you're working in uh, University of Goa. Is it yes, a state? Goa university. It's, a, it's a central it's a university or university. state university. And what do you teach? Uh, I take MBA, MBA financial okay. services, master okay. in business administration. Yeah. Okay. What, what papers do you teach within that? Uh, presently, I'm taking strategic management. Uh, okay. I've earlier thought essentials of management, marketing. These are my mm -hmm. areas. Okay. Okay, madam. Thank you. Thank so you. if there is no, any other comment, otherwise I'll hand it over to Rakesh. He can, we can continue learning Moodle together. We have today, we have... Sir, just one question. Uh, as of now, we are using this uh, karnatakaeducation.org slash uh, uh, LMS, right? So Moodle is, hmm. uh, I think, uh, uh, uploaded onto the server. Uh, 
can we yes. do this uh, on moodle itself moodle.org itself actually there is in create fact the the, tomorrow yeah tomorrow when you're going to create a course we are going to teach you to create a course on one such platform i don't know if it's moodle.org or it's not moodle.org it's another site okay. which is off okay offering the, the facility of if that particular site so you can offer courses for your institution so even if your institution is not uh, installing the server immediately because everything takes time you can offer a course tomorrow yeah. itself when you go back for your students and they can log in so tomorrow your hands on we will do on that platform only where you will create yeah, a for course. us there is a, and a for, for us what happens is some of the kerala colleges most they don't have a government colleges mm. don't they don't have their own sites uh, yeah, most of yeah. it is uh, uh, through the directorate of uh, collegiate education so mm, uh, mm. they have to install it in their server so a space yeah. constraint mm. is always there so yeah one, one suggestion yeah so is, sir one yeah. suggestion for you actually right. even i feel see individual colleges installing moodle and maintaining moodle you need to have you know tech team and all it's always a challenge in our context but mm -hmm. you can encourage dc itself your directorate of college education if they yeah, install moodle it, then you you know space is not a problem because you, like for example in our moodle we have configured that no file more than half mb can be uploaded in moodle so okay. for example you are going to create videos in this course but we will not allow you to upload the video into moodle you will upload the video on your youtube and you will simply give the link in the moodle so that okay. way the directorate can make sure that moodle space is not a big problem but every affiliated institution to the dc should be able to have its own uh, login it's not okay. difficult so public yeah. institutions instead of saying every college we should have its own moodle we can say let the directorate because of the directorate they will hire one person who will upgrade the moodle who will you know technical support is required let us persuade our directorates you know college mm -hmm. principal should persuade the director if you install moodle at a university level or something the affiliated institutions can get the benefit why should we go to a private provider and pay money there when we can do it in our own institution so that we should do sir but the university will tell why, why if you install it the faculty won't use then you will tell no sir we have been trained we will use it so please do it <laughs> that is the benefit of the program okay thank you sir thank you yes so rakesh here so let's continue our the the ants and activities but uh, before that as uh, for a for a immediate start so as i said uh, uh, before the break so from tomorrow onwards we are going to create your own course on your selected topic for that you are not going to use our uh, karnataka education the lms the moodle site but uh, we will uh, tell you one more site which is freely providing a space to create a uh, individual courses for the faculty sir uh, for the institution so that website we will tell you at the end of this session so that you can register by end of today you can register for that course and uh, sorry for the platform and from tomorrow onwards you can uh, able to create a courses okay so yeah i'm going to come back to my course here uh yeah so the last one is the the presentation file i hope all of you have downloaded if anybody wants to download you can download it otherwise anyway it will be in the moodle so if any uh, anytime you can access moodle and uh, go through this presentation file as well so uh, if i come back to the general section same way uh, the activity completion uh, progress of which i showed here on the top right side the same way if you go to general section also there are some few activities which are you know already showing here uh, in that uh, submit uh, submit your assignment is also one activity so submit your assignment means uh, now uh, your assignment is uh, yeah guru sir has already discussed about the, the assignment so instead of you know if, if if your students wants to write something in your in a are you if if your students want to create some slide or they want to create some videos and they want to share it with you 
So any kind of the digital assignments which you want to take it from the students, you can use this uh, as submit your the the assignment activity, which I created here. Right now it is showing the uh, uh, you know not it done. So the assignment is as part of this program. Please provide your topic the the topic which you have chosen. So uh, Guru sir has already discussed with all of you. Some of you have taken some broad topic and some of you have taken some you know very narrow topic which uh, you know sir has given us some suggestion so based on that if you have already changed the topic please go to here and even though the topic which you have already chosen previously yesterday and you are going to stick to that same topic everybody who are, uh, who are here now please go to the submit your assignment section and please mention your topic name and also write three to four lines about your selected topic so uh, i am going to click here to participate in this submit assignment activity so right now if you look at the status all of your status might be will be the same so the submission status no attempt grading status no attempt and due date is uh, 22nd march uh, it's too long so but uh, time remaining five days seven hours but now at the bottom there is a add submission so by clicking on this we can add a submission so what is the submission what is the first thing my topic so let's say my topic is ICT in education this is my topic so let's topic name and then you want to type some few lines about this topic you can come to the next line and type a uh, few lines about this about your topic so once you do this, uh, just if you want to give some reference as a file or something, like Guru sir already mentioned, in our server, we have given only half MB. Maximum file size is half MB only. Like if you have a photo or if you have a, you know, uh, draw picture, so you want that file size is, if it is more than 500 KB, then you can't upload the file here, whether it is a PDF, whether it is image or a video or any from file. So those kind of things you have to upload it on a Google Drive or a Google, or you can use a YouTube for videos. So those platform you have to upload your resource and you have to give the link in the message box. But if you have a file which is less than 500 KB, you can upload it here by clicking on this. So, sir, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, here the files which have been mentioned that which I can upload, will it be like uh, any? Uh, references related to my topic or what i am going to do any slide or uh, this not, no this is not compulsory i'm just explaining okay. the, this future okay. but the very important part part is your topic name should be mentioned in the text part this is just i'm showing like in the future if okay. any any time you want to give some references okay. for the students or you want to give references for other uh, uh, peers so you can use this upload okay. files Okay, so thank you. And again, it is a customizable. By for example, 500 KB is just a. We have configured our uh, the file size limit is 500 KB, but we can make it 5 MB. We can make it 10 MB if we have a huge uh, space in our server. And number of files we have given only one. That also it's a uh, uh, configurable, so anybody can. So I'm going to click on this save changes. So this is how I'm going to submit my assignment. So I'm just completing my assignment. So uh, what is that uh, assignment? We have to type the topic name and three few lines about. So look at the status now. So submission status, it is submitted for grading. Anyway, we are not going to grade this for. It's just it is uh, Moodle, it is saying like that. And uh, yeah, the online text, it is showing here. And uh, yeah, that's it. So now if people wants to change the submission they can go to edit submission and they, they can change it or they can completely remove the submission and they can re-attempt the same uh, submit uh, assignment section okay so this is how you can uh, people can participate in the submit assignment uh, activity so can all of you do this now so just go to the submit now look at my the tick mark here the progress bar now it is showing the tick mark that means this activity is also done from my side.
if you look at the, these two things one is attendance and the, there is one text this for this also there is a progress sections uh, completion activity tick mark but for these two i can do tick mark by clicking on this boxes can you guess why why it is showing this tick i can do the tick mark from here itself directly whereas if i go to the other links there i can't do any changes that is for students this is for teachers sorry sir this is for teachers who came yeah exactly the attendance only the teachers can record it there is option to students self record is option is also there means students can log in and they can mark their attendance in this that option is also there but in my case in my scenario i am not given i have not uh, configured like that and the second thing is it is just a text it is nothing else there is no link or there is nothing is there this second one is just a link that's why i can able to mark this as a completion but whereas these things it will not come but now it is coming because i have not configured these things so tomorrow i will show you how to configure this the activity log completion so can now please all of you go to submit your assignment and type your uh, Thank you, Danya. Submitted, Sharmila ma'am. Thank you. Sir, I am in day two. Mm -hmm. uh, opened it, but I couldn't find where assignment is there. No, no, the, the assignment is under general section, not under day two. Go back to the general section, the first section. Okay, sir. Um, excuse me, sir. Uh, sir, submitting a file or uploading a file is optional, right? Yeah, yeah, that is optional. Only the topic name is compulsory. Okay, thank you. Uh, excuse me, sir. Sir, I have a question. Sir, uh, yes, uh, sir, my topic is uh, uh, fixed, but uh, if I want to change some in, in some uh, in in my course, if I want to change uh, change mm -hmm. the name or the subject of the, any change the heading, so do I mm -hmm. have an option of like, editing or something like that? Because I cannot. See you can go to edit submission. No? There is a there is an option called edit submission at the bottom. Okay. 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 Two options. If you remove your submission, remove it. Uh, changes in the submission, you can go for edit submission. You'll be able to see that. So once you've done it, please uh, come in a chat window so that uh, we can show some few more things are there which are very interesting, especially if you are going to create your own course. You can do more customization, which I will show you. Sir, I can't find the assignment. Uh, uh, assignment is, sir. Sorry, sir. I can't find assignment uh, question. Go to the general section, sir. You will you will see that. Maybe you are you are in some other section. Mobile general section. Yeah, go to the general section. I can I can see you. Oh, sorry, I'm in a student role. That's why I can't see the overall submitted. But if I go to see, if I change it, change my role to uh, normal, like as an educator, say I can see all the submission, view all submission. This is a faculty view. And this is a student view. 
so in student view i can see only my submission whereas faculty submission i can go to view all submission so i came to general section submit your assignment we have to click into there now yes 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 you have to click okay. on that so if you look at the the number of submission is just a one that is from the a shamala so that is submitted for grading maybe others you are doing it now let's wait for a few more minutes then we can see Let's see how many of you are completed now. Uh, still, it is showing only one name. Okay. I hope others are trying to finish that uh, submission, the assignment submission activity. I have submitted, sir, but not updating to you. Oh, really? Okay. Maybe we'll go back and uh, see this. Yeah, now it is showing 22. Yes, exactly. It was not refreshed. See, out of 60, we got 22 submission. Uh, let's click on view all submission. Now, why it is not showing? Maybe. Yeah, now it is showing all the names. OK, then if you are done with the assignment submission, then move on to the next part. So next part is uh, activity completion log. So for example, like now all the students have submitted their assignment, they have participated in a discussion forum and all those things. Once you finish the course, so if you are in a, a, a in part of the course, so you can always track individual uh, logins. So that I will show it. That unfortunately, I can't see it from the student view. So right now, I'm in the student view in this tab. But I will come back to the, the faculty tab here. So uh, if I open my co course page, the first page, on the top right side, you will have a settings as a faculty. But for in your case, since you are a, just a student for this course, you will not have this option. Even though so if I you have, have this... submitted, can you see it? No problem, sir. I'll see it later. Anyway, we will export That's after this session. Thank okay. you. Huh? Okay. So yeah, if you are a course faculty or if you are a site manager, the overall the Moodle course manager or something. So in every course next to that, there will be a settings icon. If you click on that. You'll have all these options, course completions, filters, grading, 
I can take a backup of this entire course. For example, the very good thing about this backup course is like once you invest your time to create some such a good course with all the resources, include video, audio, text, all the kind of resources. So once you do, uh, uh, you know, create in a course with all the required resources, then uh, for, uh, then upcoming years or upco for the upcoming batches, you don't need to, again, you have to create the entire course. So you just go to the, uh, the existed course and you can take a backup. You can just back up this uh, entire course, include files, include links, videos, everything will come as it is. Include the submission also. So once you take this backup, again, you can restore it in a new course. So that is a good thing about the, the backup and the restore option. So you can, once you create, once you invest the time to create a course, so you can always for uh, upcoming batches, you can always reuse the same course and you can always, there's a scope to edit also. Okay, so, but if I go to the more options here, there is a report section. If I go to report, there is a activity completion section here. So now if I click on this, all of you, it's very interesting. Look at the screen now. So when I click on the activity completion, look at here, it is showing overall completed which activity. So for now, I just uh, put a filter for only P, uh, uh, the, the users start with a P, but I will remove that, I will put a all. Now look at the, it is showing all your names, your email IDs in front of that, these are the individual activities. One is the, the course announcement. Most of, some of you are trying to open that course announcement, I think. For example, uh, uh, Ramalu sir, Bhupati sir, all of you are trying to open this course related announcement section also. That's why it is showing here, putting the tick mark. And if you go to the other activities here, say example, submit your assignment, Bhupati sir is done. Suman Chakraburti sir is done. So like that we can see overall completed which activity and overall not done. So for example, discussion forum. So discussion forum, most of you are already, you know, participated. That's why it is showing the tick mark here. And look at the option here. You can download this in a spreadsheet format. So if I click on this, it will download this result in a spreadsheet format. So now I can download and I can open it in a spreadsheet. So this will show you the overall not completed and the status of this. If they have completed, it will show you the when, when did they complete the, the particular activity. For example, wherever the status it is saying completed in, in front of the, the, in the next column, it is showing the time. Means when did they complete this particular activity? So this, this way you can completely track your students, the participation in the course. Okay. So, uh, this as a student you can't access this data but only the course faculty or a site manager or admin can access all this data and export it okay so then few more things so another interesting thing is if i go back to the course there is an option for example all of you let's say uh, you have a set of 30 students but in that 30 students, you have to give assignments for a group wise. For example, for 30 students, you have a two groups, 15 in each group. So for 15 people, you have to give a separate assignment or a, or a reading material, which other group should not able to access it. That means basically restricting the, the groups. So that also it, it is possible to do. For example, if you look at the participants view here, Again, I'm saying that this is the, all these things are related to the, as a faculty, not as a student. So now I'm back to the 
the faculty role. So that's why I'm able to do all these things. If I go to participants, these are all the participants. But if I go to if I go to settings here and there is a groups. So I can create a groups. For example, yesterday I was just trying some few groups, group one and group two. So I created two different groups here. And each activity which we have given here in the course page, for each activity, we can assign a group also. Or we can keep it open for everyone. Or if I want to keep this link only for the group one, then I can assign this to only group one. In that case, the other group can't see this link also. So that is the restriction, but restriction can only happen in the group level, not the individual level. For example, you want to give permission for all the 29 students, but not for the, the one the one remaining students. That possibility is not there. Only the group level, you can restrict the access or a participation of any activity or a resource. Is that clear? Any doubts, any comments, anything? Like one, the what all we have seen, one is the activity completion status, which faculty can uh, export the data in a spreadsheet and you can use it for analysis. The second one is the uh, grouping. So if you want to restrict some resources uh, by accessing from the other groups, you can do that also. But tomorrow, anyway, I'm going to show all these things. And you are also going to do some hands on on these things. But before that, like if you have any doubts or anything, any comments, Sir, I have a doubt. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. In this platform, is there any opportunity for uh, video conferencing? Ha. Huh. So, uh, if you look at our own, uh, the Moodle server, that is Karnataka Education, what we have done is, as Guru sir said, we will not use any of the proprietary platform, whether Google Meet or other, because of this course, we are using Google Meet. Otherwise, we will never use Google Meet for our own course, which we conduct. We will not use a Google Meet. We will not uh, use a uh, Skype or anything. We always use a uh, free and open source software. That's why Moodle we are using as an LMS. And for the webinars, we use a software called Big Blue Button software. That is also webinar software. Same like a Google Meet or a, a Zoom or a uh, you know Microsoft team. Uh, so that we can embed in this software. That. Uh, that should be done from the server level. Like once they install Moodle server, Moodle software in your server, then we should we should tell them to install the big blue button software also along with this Moodle. So then you can conduct any online uh, session at any time without limiting duration or any restricted features. OK, thank you, sir. Yeah. So other option is like what you can do is like what I've done in this course only. If you go back to the course general section, I given a link here. The same link only, the the, the Google Meet which we are using now. No? So this is the, the same link I've given here. So within the Moodle, you can create a Google Meet link and give a link hyperlink in the course page. In this way, you can participate in the video. For example, now if I click on this, it will take me to the in our current session here i can again join the session this is another option so you create a meeting room on a google meet and give a hyperlink in the course if the bbb is not available that big blue button software always not available okay. any other questions yeah okay then I, the last two more features i will show you and then i think we can wind up the session uh, the last thing is the email notification. For example, if I come back to the course here, there is a discussion forum, right? Under day two. If you go to discussion forum, okay. So for each topic, there is a toggle button here, which is subscribe and unsubscribe. So what it will do is, like for now, in our uh, the Moodle site, what we have done is we have given a subscribe for all the discussion forum topic. 
what it will do is uh, at the end of the day it will send a one email to your uh, registered email account about all the discussion to uh, happened in this platform for example today we have just some many of you have created a discussion topic and some of you are replied to the my own, my post this post so all this will come in an email also at the end of the day or maybe uh, we set it up as a 5:30 maybe at 5:30 all of you will get an email which will have all the details about this discussion topics okay so that is the email notification which always you can uh, you have an option to disable also like if, if you don't want to get an email about the discussion forums always you can go to the preferences and change the notification thing here there is a forum preferences so you can disable the notification from here but uh, all students will get a notification about uh, uh, the discussion happened in during the day okay then the there is a calendar option uh, so for example if i go to my dashboard the main page look at my calendar on the right side here this will not come on the course page it will not come when you are open the course you have to go to the dashboard if you click on the dashboard on the top right side you will have some options called calendar the good thing about the calendar is if faculty create some events or if the if the faculty marks something on the calendar then all the individual students will get a notification or they will get an email about the uh, task or event which I have created by the faculty. Example, I have created a uh, event here. 16th, we have a session that is today. Tomorrow also we have a session. Then our next session is on 21st. Again, I have created a event on 21st and 22nd. So I'm just created these uh, events. Okay, this will also give a uh, notification through email. So that's a good thing about calendar. So calendar uh, will work in an individual level. Calendar will work on course level. Calendar also will work on the site level. So right now the calendar which you are seeing is, this is site level calendar. But you can create a calendar for the course level also. Okay, so these are the two things. So. We have few more other options which we can explore it in our tomorrow session. But before uh, that, uh, any questions or any any doubts you have? I can come back to here. Submitted. Okay. Okay, if there is no doubts, I think the last part is like, as we said, Urusar said, uh, we are going to use a free plane tool and one more tool called Voco screen. These two tools, we are going to use it in our future session on, uh, for creating a concept map and as well as for creating video. Uh, most of you have already uh, able to install it, but some of you, you found it some difficulty to find the right uh, application. So I'll just uh, share my screen and quickly I will explain how to do the installation. Please all of you follow, just note down this instruction if you have not it done. If you already installed it, no problem, then uh, just keep on watch. So uh, the link which I shared it in a WhatsApp group, that is uh, like if you go back to my, this is my WhatsApp group and Saying it, this is a message I shared it in a group in yesterday. So I have given it two links. One is a free play installation and Voco screen. Let's take a free plane as an example or Voco screen. Let's take Voco because maybe you are finding the uh, difficulty to install Voco screen. Click on the installation link here, and in this page there is a section called installation. If you are using a Windows computer, please follow this instruction. I'm go I'm also following the same instruction. I will click on this to download the file first. This is the first step. And it is trying to load the site. 
if you look at here these two are the beta version so i don't want to try the beta version okay uh, i want the stable version so better to take the current version section links so let's take the voco screen ng 3.5.0 i request all of you if you have, by mistake if you have installed a beta version please don't do it okay please un uninstall by today or tomorrow because anyway voco screen session is on next week but before that please try to uh, install only this stable version the current version 3.5.0 download this it will download a file called .exe extension file just download it once it downloads just go to the downloaded place in my case downloaded this is a place and just double click on the file then it will give some small uh, pop-up windows saying uh, say ssr just follow the same instruction which uh, anyway i've already mentioned in here also we have a tutorial video tutorials okay so you can click on this installation video this video will explain how to install uh, oco screen okay so yeah anything else arish Prasad. yeah thank you arisa arisa has shared the, the installation link in the chart window you can all you can always refer that So this is all about uh, our today's session, but 